Good morning, everyone. Hey, welcome aboard Flying with Mike. More history in the making, if you will. <clears throat> TWA flew last time, so why not give their biggest competitor, Arch Enemy, the Nemesis, Pan Am, otherwise known as the Clipper Services, their shot on the stream. So, here you go. And we have uh, a 747. Uh, we haven't flown this in a while on stream, so uh, bear with me, uh, be kind, forgiving, and uh, we're going to have a great flight. Um, for those of you not privy uh, to the Discord channel because you do not accept this invite, um, you found out that the scheduling department required us to uh, require a 747 crew fresh to uh, head over to the Bay Area. Well, my crew was the freshest they could find, and we drew the shortest straw, and we're off to the Bay Area instead of the Gateway City. So I hope you enjoy that, folks. The, uh, they had to find another crew. Probably took a 727 over to the Gateway, uh, which actually, people tell me Pan Am went there. I never saw them there, folks. I never even knew they touched down there. So I'll leave it with them. You know, hey. May know more than me. Then that's, you know, slim possibility, but possible. <laughs> just kidding, folks. I could just may never have seen them. But uh, TWA owns pretty much, well, did at the time St. Louis. So that's why I say that. And this one trips airline, eh, they didn't get along well. So I can't imagine them playing nicely in the gateway. So, but anyway, we're not in the gateway. <laughs> we're in JFK. We're oddly enough hang on a second i need a little coffee here's an i a little irony with what i just said this is pan am's turf jfk for the most part i mean granted other airlines claim it but this was pan am's turf up until they shut down um where we parked last stream and for those i know people are going well we were with you there captain well you are now. That would be, here, let me just kind of zoom me out here a little. Oop, that didn't do what I wanted. That's the wrong way. Wrong way, captains in, uh, behind the wheel. All right. So this was Pan Am. All this area I am circling. And I'm sure a hangar or two over there behind us somewhere on the airfield. Not a big Pan Am aficionado. I just know they had a beautiful world port here. Um, very iconic, very historic. We'll get back to that in a moment. Over here in the distance, just to the uh, north of the tower there. Not this terminal, but this little one you see here. Not well drawn out in default explained but that was where TWA came into and it's very historic very iconic and actually was in many movies folks because of its futuristic look back in the 60s guess what's still there well at least the terminal portion of it is uh, they kept that. The Historical Society said that's a piece of history. The, behind it were JetBlue and whatever else comes in now to Terminal 5. That all got revamped. But that uh, what you walked into, it'd be iconic if you're familiar with St. Louis. You walk in out of the parking garage into the big grand terminal they had with the three, I call them humps. I'm sure there's an architectural name for it. I'm just not architecturally savvy. Um, but you walk into that, folks. That's what they kept there. The equivalent of what's at Lambert. They kept there and they got rid of the world port. Yeah, that was. A, <laughs> I mean, the world port was pretty cool. But I understand the real estate they took up. I mean, they're probably more than this feeble mind comes up with, with why it went. But yeah, kind of a um, iconic or a, a irony in place that Pan Am always seemed to win out over TWA, but in the end, 
TWA won it. And TWA won another 10 years that uh, Pan Am did. So, uh, but anyway, enough history. Y'all didn't come here to go back to school or to resume classes if yours have ended. You all came here to sit back, relax, and enjoy a ride over to the Bay Area. So let's zoom in on Felis 747 200. We are taking out November 735 Papa Alpha. Pan Am coined it the Jet Clipper Young American. And uh, uh, we're going to be flying for Pan Am Virtual. A uh, good bunch of people, folks. Uh, if you're looking uh, for a, a, a nostalgic airline, uh, they are one of the, the better ones out there. I also fly for one Piedmont, a second one. And uh, they also have a, a, a conglomeration of, uh, including Pan Am, of other airlines on top of the uh, old Piedmont knot, which you know today with the little lawn darts and turboprops. Back in the day when they flew 727s and 737s and, oh, yes, the 767s when they came on the market. So, but anyway, uh, enough of all of that. But, yeah, if you're looking for a great place to be, folks, Pan Am Virtual, check them out. I mean, I'm not going to tell you, go join them. you got to do that on your own. you got to decide, are they what you are looking for? And they dabble a little in DCS as well. This guy doesn't. That's why you haven't seen ever a DCS video. A uh, lot of reasons. We're not getting into them here. Never going to on stream. But uh, best chat, you'll not see me there. You may see me in something I always said I wouldn't fly an MD-11. But you can see how often they fly. So... All right, so let's uh, get in here. Let's first uh, get that jetway moved over so the people can get on board. Uh, again, this is default. Not even sure if JFK has a scenery out there in X-Plane. I could be wrong. They might, uh, but I'm not sure. I think um, San Francisco, I know, just released one. Uh, we have not loaded it, and probably... Not to discredit the, the uh, people making the sceneries and all. I like to show you all what you get out of the box when you buy X-Plane. At a fraction of the cost for the other sim. Alright, so we look like we have the jetway in place. Let's kind of skedaddle. Let's go with this one. And we got the cargo bays open. We're on the uh, external power. Let's get inside, shall we? All right, first thing I like to do, folks, punch out these yokes. We don't need them at the moment. Then I've already done some of this. Um, I come in, hit ground, hit the chocks and the ground power unit. Then I come over here to the flight engineer and if you're familiar not familiar with this kind of flying folks back in the the jet age as they call it even though we're kind of still in it but first generation these are what built the world in the jet age there are three crew members here folks over on this side he'd wave but you know he's a little shorter than the seat uh the captain over same thing uh you know height challenged over here in the uh, right seat is the first officer and the guy behind the curtain that makes it all comfortable and enjoyable back in the back is the man that does all the work the flight engineer uh i'd say pat him on the back on the way out on your next flight but they don't fly 747 200s they matter of fact he did such a great job at his job they got rid of his panel and position and they threw it all up to the pilots so they can now get the glory all right so let's get on it shall we all right so like i said we have power on the aircraft if you don't believe me we have the ground power on the bus we have uh battery and standby power going we have we'll check them now the squibs the apu We've got the galley powers on. 
trim airs on. We'll go ahead and turn that humidifier on. We don't want Muffy to get too tepid back there. Oh my gosh, we're in the Hamptons for crying out loud. Okay, we're in the West Hamptons called the Queens. Um, but anyway, um, okay, we've got those squibs checked. Now, when I come to the next one, which is right below it, I like to bring the the view all the way back and I'll show you why here and I may have to go further back. Oops. Yeah, hang on. Let me do that again. Okay. We do have one issue at play right now. We have a really hard frame rate hit on us right now. I'll show that in a moment. That is probably why I will not be on VATSIM because it's probably as soon as I come on, it'll say voice disconnected, and then it'll say you're below 20 frame rates per second, and VATSIM doesn't like that. So that'll be why we don't depart. Okay, that is your engine fire checks. You saw them all go off up here. We'll do it again because we got to do the B side. See them all lighting up? Okay. That's why I come back to the bulkhead here. All right. We'll do basically anything with the word test. And I think, uh, let's see, this is the cargo fire. So this will be primarily these lighting up. And again, A, B. Okay. And we're going to check them again up front. All right, we're just about done with the tests. Okay. Over here is mainly your generators and stuff like that. Down here are doors uh, that are open and other warnings you could get. Lamp test. Now let's check our brake temperatures. Push the button in, you're going to get a brake heat up now they're gonna go okay and yes we're gonna talk about a mishap that happened with the 747 400 yesterday during the course of the flight today and if you haven't heard about it look it up I'm not even gonna give you what to look up y'all are Google savvy All right. And finally, our gear doors. Gauge tech. And up top here. All right. So now we're going to come across, check our fuel pumps real quick, turning them on. If there's fuel in the tanks, these lights will go off. That's why they're still on here. And we'll just come back, turning them off. Usually you leave them on, folks, once you do this, but we're still a good half hour easily before engines start. Okay, and then we check our cross feeds. Okay, everything looks good here. Moving up, push your uh, fuel used usage button to reset everything to zero. Um, and then we're going to do a gauge check. Just push and hold till you see the test start. And then just watch as it goes through the test cycle and out. Now, we already have fueled. So we're pretty, like I said, we're getting... We're almost ready. Let's go ahead and get some recirculators on. Barometric pressure today at Jeff K. Jeff K. 
Did it really say that? 3036? Holy mackerel. I'm going to have to zoom in to make sure I get this one right. Holy mackerel, they're running pretty high on the uh, parametric today. Okay, same thing here. 30, we'll put it about right there, we'll guesstimate. Okay, and then uh, initial altitude of 34, so we'll set 35. All right. So the flight engineers panel is, for the most part, ready to go. Let's just slide over, tilt it a little, kind of zoom in. Engine oil, um, hang on a second, right here. Make sure we have around six quarts or six gallons, my bad. Down here, we'll turn the panel lights up. Put a little background in, bring the circuit breakers up. And then we're going to do, I'm going to back out again. Just turn the uh, light check on and we're going to check all the bulbs. Make sure GE and Sylvania and Panasonic and all didn't jip us. Okay, looks like all of them are working here. And also we'll get a little chit chat in about this. Hopefully if we do end up being able to get online. All right, up front we go, and let's go top side. So now the flight engineer gets here first, usually, and he's got a lot to set up, as you can see, on his panel. He also helps out the flight crew, because they're getting the more comprehensive stuff about the weather and all of that along the way. The latest gossips from their flight attendant chicks and uh, so forth. Sorry, I had to do that, folks. All right, so what we did, turned the anti-skid on and armed the body gear steering. The body gear steering, if you look under the wing, and we're going to do that right now. Okay, you have these lovely landing gears. Um, when you turn, if that's armed, they pivot allowing you to take turns tighter and save wear and tear on all of that rubber out there. So when we push back, I hope to show that. Okay, so that's armed. Coming down the next one, let's go ahead and align all three. Even though we're FMS, it's going to require it. Make sure your start switches are off for one and two. Coming down, we stay on this panel. We're not, other than the um, IRS or yeah, the um, INS system, we come down, then we come down, then we come down. All right, so we're going to come down here to the cell cow. I put the, this is actually not functional. So I could do this to reset, and it ain't going to do anything. Same with the UHF. And I'm going to say it, thank God. You don't want to listen to HF the whole flight like they used to before the advent of ACARS and other equipment to uh, be able to transmit to your oceanic, uh, to your um, um, non-radar controlled facilities without having to constantly hear... And to your dispatch center, because that's how you got a hold of them, folks, in flight. Say you're crossing the Atlantic, headed to, say, oh, I don't know, uh, pick a point over in Europe. You didn't get your step climbs. And now you're running low on fuel because those step climbs help you out, folks, especially going east. Those of you in... Uh, um, Across the pond this year got a good dose of that so uh, if you don't get that and you can't get a hold of dispatch well you got to divert and uh, if you get a hold of dispatch they'll save you from going to the wrong place because if you're a cargo plane carrying the wrong kind of cargo you don't want to land in some places with what you may have behind you 
Anyway, coming down the next panel, told you we were going to test it, and we're going to test the voice recorder. You're looking for it to swing twice and stable. Okay, we're in a line. Start valves off. Engine's normal. And I'm getting real tired of that. Uh, emergency lights armed. We'll come back to this when we're ready. Lights on, door locked. Okay, coming down the next one, a line, and we got uh, both uh, ignitions off, compass slaved, radio to USB. Nav lights, logo lights on, the rest off, except for we'll turn up the panel and the overhead, which it's daylight now. I know it's hard to tell they're actually on, but they now are. Radio switches on, testing the stall. You hear that? Could be this, but it could be a stall. Any ice off. We'll do a wing any ice check. Checking. Whoop. On. Overheat check on the probe heaters. They're the bottom ones. Good. Turn them back off and power on. Good check. And you don't need to leave the power on, meaning as long as, oops, I got one switch off. Uh, as long as the switch is there, they're on. And we have a light check. So everything's lit up here. Down in the middle, we'll kind of go this way, this way, down on the bottom. Everything's lit up. And off it goes. Speaking of the middle, which we seem to be loving to get to all the time, let's get in here. And we are in JFK. So let me get an ILS approach. Wait a minute. Gonna be taking off on one three. We'll go. Oh, I am glad I did that because my mind was looking somewhere else for takeoff. Ooh, <laughs> I'm glad I pulled that up. Okay, let's uh, get uh, one three. Right. Okay, so we're going one three left. He says cautiously. One 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 five. So we'll set that here. If I'm crying and you're crying, then who's flying this plane? Won't be forgetting a hey, spaceman. Welcome aboard. Won't be forgetting the eight cars. I got to get the people loaded up first. Um, and <laughs> yep. Hey, appreciate that. All right. So we're on uh, the frequency. We'll do. First off, get the panel light up, and up, okay, that looks good, down right, that looks good, same thing over here, come on computer, there we go. All right, got those set. Do a quick flight director check. The things came on, things came on. Everything's off in the middle. We'll set these here later. And we're not going to 50,000 feet. Let's roll that down. That's a good start. <laughs> 50,000 feet in a 7.4. Uh, Spaceman, you might be able to do that with your SP. 
<laughs> All right, so we're going to go through here. Clock is set. We'll get the speed in a bit. Test. And <laughs> you don't like it. Huh? I just don't like the look of it. I it just. You know, it looks like what some flight sims do to a 747 400 uh, until you get the resolutions right. They squish them. That's what the SP reminds me. <laughs> All right. Good check there. All right. We'll check. Push to test one. Push to test two. Green. Cleared. And we'll get that one real quick. Go back over here to clear that one out. All right, now let's get the rest of it here in the middle. All right, so we did the indicator warnings. We'll get the reset there. Altitude. Okay, what that'll do, folks, is when I dial down, you're gonna you're gonna know the sound. That's what we're waiting for. When you are a thousand below, thousand above, yeah. Ah, <laughs> uh, the L-1011. That's another one I never really liked. I was more a DC-10, but that even wasn't high on my list. GPS? We never Glide heard slope. this. Glide slope. Pull up. Okay. All you're going to get with the rudder ratio test is a warning right above Pro-P. Okay. All right, let's move over to the other half of the panel here. And basically do the same things. Push to test. Push to test for the flight engineer or a first officer. Test my... Uh, and I'm going to go over, reach over here and reset his. Now, the one thing I don't like, and I don't know if this is real or not, when I do the test of the radar altimeter, I don't get that do it. It makes no sounds like the other one did. I don't know if that's a true thing or not. Back over to the to the wall here. We'll get the uh, panel lights turned on. Okay, and then down below, let's get the radar screen warming up. That's this. The radar itself is still turned off. All the switches are guarded. Rolling back to the other side. Brake pressure, we'll get to that in a second. That's this gauge is green, so we're good there. And the radar screen's heating up there. Down below real quick, folks. I made mention of this. You can actually control the sound like you can in the aircraft coming into your ears. Be it your speakers, be it your earmuffs, by these levers. These are all the way up. PA will be able to hear, but not full blast. Here is what the INS looks like if you run with SIVA or the LTN. LTN just looks a little different. Um, I don't because it messed up on me once a long time ago, and uh, I just never went back because, folks, I'm in to fly to have fun. I'm not in to try to figure out why something's not working. Unless it's something pretty simple. So I switched to an FMC program, and that's what I flew with ever since. And this is just a fun frequency I like to have in backup. All right, everything set frequency-wise. We'll go to standby on the transponder. And whoop, radar tilted up five. And we'll get the lights on down here, too. All right, and uh, that is all of the checks except for one. Let's get the uh, FMC loaded while we're here. Okay, we're going from K. It's actually not a tough one. J. Whoop, whoop, whoop. Helps to hit K, Mike, not J. K. 
Okay, S. Oh, where am I going? F O. And bear with me one second. I want to make sure I did put this in as a um, company route. Okay. Every time, it depends how you do it sometimes, folks, but uh, they'll go in a certain way for one from one program, a different way for a different program. So that's why I wanted to check this out. SFO zero route. If I go to the next page, there's my route. Now, the only thing here, folks, <laughs> it's all the J80. <laughs> oh, that's the part that gets me. I didn't click legs. She's got legs. Oh, sorry. Oh, my gosh, I'm losing people over that voice. Yeah, that's just weird how that comes up. All right, so there's the flight plan. We're good. We have accepted it. We're Clipper 5. All right, put in the departure, shall we? <clears throat> and what I'm going to do for this, first I want to get rid of this and this. Put this in. All right, and this would be a good time to pull up Sim Toolkit real quick. Free program, and I've got it minimized. That's why it's not showing up for you. All right, free program here. Lots of tools, folks. It really should be in your Sim helping you out. Yes, I am planning a leg to Katak. Uh, and it will be with uh, Pan Am as well, but tomorrow will not be. Yes, we're heading to Kai Tag tomorrow. All right, real quick, weather. Uh, hopefully I'll be able to come online. If so, we'll be on Whiskey using the uh, two twos now. Cool. That makes things a little easier out of here. I was thinking they're going to put us on the one threes. All right, so uh, an operator, blah, blah, blah. that's if we're able to come online. Uh, I'll show you why I'm a little hesitant, and I don't like seeing that message with controllers. So there's our uh, ATIS, San Francisco right now, 280. Uh, what runways? Uh, you know what? Let's go for the ones. <laughs> we'll go for the two eights, of course. However, it's overcast at 600. It uh, would be really interesting to see the TAF for this. And I can show you how, well, as a matter of fact, we'll pull it up here real quick. 13 and 11. So we're in a kind of a, no, we're not in a fog situation. So low ceilings there. So, and it's early morning there. Well, it's morning there. So you see these down here, folks? If I put KSFO. Let's see what they got a TAF. Terminal area forecast. Okay, we're above minimums there, so we're cleared for takeoff. And it looks like six miles. Few clouds scattered. So yeah, as soon as we get airborne, things will probably improve. Uh, eight, you know. So you can just see it's hovering with a layer. Here comes another overcast uh, tomorrow, 0900 Zulu. So once we get airborne, whatever's low hanging over there should be good. Reason we bring that up, folks, we took off once with weather below minimums at our destination. <laughs> we couldn't make it over the hill that we didn't know was there. And it was quite ugly. <laughs> so, but there you go, folks. Load sheet real quick. 366 people there, spacemen, have signed their NDAs and are cleared to fly on the Clipper 5 today. Payload of 80,000 pounds. 
fuel, 170,341 pounds. And uh, we're going to cruise at about Mach 8.5. You can see our cruise level. Initially, 3,400 or 34,000. Phyllis, I believe, is near Dayton at 36,000. And then out by Denver, we'll step up to 38,000. So pretty good flight in hand. Sorry if you're on and listening, uh, JFK. And I think Approach was up at one point. Um, <laughs> well, that's why I make them sign an NDA. That way we don't, you know, that they can't disclose it was bad. And, but, uh, you know, and also on the flip, by my good landing, they can't disclose that either, so. All right, so let's get rid of Sim Toolkit and let's finish up this pre-flight because it is lengthy in this plane, folks. And that's the other thing. If you're going to fly with the INS systems, folks, you're already seeing what it's just like without it. Add 30 minutes to 45 minutes to what you're doing. It's a, it's, it's a bit. So, all right, so we're departing JFK. We were told to, to, I forgot already. <laughs> what up? What a pilot. Uh, departing da -da 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 to two right. Um, what is two two right on the JFK five? I think it's just a straight out. Yeah, two two right's a straight out departure, so we're not even going to worry about plopping on JFK. So, execute. Come back to the legs page. So you can see we're going to come off runway 22, runway heading. Once we're comfortable and ready, then we'll go direct. Uh, at least a distance five miles from JFK VOR. That's our departure, folks. And that was one thing I could show you. Hang on. Uh, you know what? We'll do it with Sim Toolkit. Down here with this little cog, you can actually set up what you see. You could put SimBrief down here. You probably could put Pan Am Virtual or your virtual airline down here. Uh, but yeah, it's, you know, a lot of things are possible. Unload, load. All right. So this is NavGraph's chart 8 point whatever update we're at right now. Oh, updates. Today, and the reason for, no LTN today, correct. Yeah, we're, uh, we had a, as if you missed that there, uh, Josty777, long time ago, I used to run SIVA uh, when it was Payware, which I think the 727 uses, and something happened. I either shut the plane down abruptly the power did it. Something happened. Anyway, the next time I flew it, it came up in error. And it wouldn't clear. And I couldn't clear it. Nothing that I did or would do would clear it. And it, I spent probably two hours, couldn't fly anymore that day because I lost time. This was before I was ever streaming, folks. And uh, it frustrated me so much, I just said to heck with it. And basically threw it off the uh, computer and found an FMC program that worked for every airplane and ran with that back then. And I'm not looking back and missing them at all. Uh, like I said, it ends up with a lengthy pre-flight in this plane too. All right, so there's the route, folks, in a way. Uh, the JFK-5 that I alluded to. Okay, you got to look down here first. This is the initials. So we're coming off 22, heading 232 for at least five miles from the airport. Then we'll head to, uh, where is it? Robbinsville. Okay, now we could come up here and read. So we're gonna go, okay, it's 224. Gateway climb, DME required uh, uh, after hours. It's a climbing right-hand turn uh, to enter, okay, and so forth. Gateway climb. What's the gateway climb? Oh, this one. 
that's if you're coming off. I don't think you're supposed to do that off the right side. I could be wrong, though, folks. I'm just going to go straight straight off and uh, then turn for um, uh, RBV Robbinsville VOR. Oh, that, I, hey, those of you that use it, I am not trying to discourage anyone. Try it. I just, I got so flustered with it, so upset that uh, I literally threw it off the computer and it, I don't run with it anymore. So, all right, let's get this and get going. Ah, don't want to do that. Matter of fact, what the heck did I just do? Oh, put the altimeter in standby. Okay. <laughs> I'm like, what did I just do? <laughs> All right. So back to the flight. So that's what we're going to do. Fly heading 232. Well, let's go ahead and put that up here. Wait a minute. Did I say 232? 223. And we'll get the radios later. So that gets us set up FMC-wise, folks. Minus one step. FNAV. And you all know it's very basic with the X-Plane FMC. You're on the RNAV. Go to next page. Put your initial cruise altitude in. FL340. Boom. I always hit execute, come back, and you're set to go. Put this one on progress. You'll see your fuels. En route, we'll put the arrival in. All right. And that takes care of just about everything. The only thing left to do, come over to here. See how my frame rates are really taxed right now, and I don't know why. Let's take a look outside one more time. Oh, it's not real cloudy. Not really sure why we're so taxed. Usually they're not that hard on it. But right now, folks, I wouldn't be able to get on VATSIM. Matter of fact, the heck is taxing it so hard? All right, let's see what we can yank back here, folks. I think this one requires... We'll let it reload and see how things look. We just did a restart before we started this too, so. Uh-oh, that doesn't sound good. I may have to restart the sim and go through all of these steps again. Oh my, oh, there we go, good. All right, well, we're gonna just have to deal with it. All right, because I didn't get much improvement. See if we get anything with that one. All 
All right, well, we'll do our best we can. Let's uh, go in, take a look at the loadout. We said 366 folks on board. All right, so I've already gone in here and set a lot of things up. Here's our 366 folks, our payload, our zero fuel weight. Aircraft is already fueled with 171,405 pounds. And uh, here's how it, all this folks really is, is a calculator. You have to go from this page, either to refuel, click your load data, either instant or work with these. I do instant on this one. Then to load the people, uh, you come over to the payload, same thing, use the load sheet. Now, um, trying to see how long do we have left to do. I'm just going to go ahead and do it instant. Okay. And then, yeah, we're not going to be able to be on VATSIM. So, all right, that that happens, folks. Although I don't know why this flight, it's doing this to me. But it is what it is. All right, so we are ready to go. Now, it also has checklists. So if you're not sure if you did everything, hey, read through them before you actually start them. And then they're going to talk. And if you miss something, they'll tell you. I'm just kind of... Okay. Oh, takeoff warning. What that is, is if you push your throttles forward, folks, and you're not configured for takeoff, you're going to get that warning. Before start checklist, please. Gear lever and lights. Down and check. Brakes. Parked. Start levers. Off. Radios. SA-79 at the go well. Flight control hydraulic power. On. INS. Hold on. Yep, I know what they're wanting. Put them to nav. And see, that gives you that next check. Check in nav. Compasses. Slaved. Window heat. On. Seat belts and no smoking. On. Emergency lights. Armed. Exterior lights. Hmm. Oh. Okay. When you run this checklist, folks, it's... Oh, when it does that. Um, it's assuming you're ready to push back, so your beacon would be on. In this case, it's not. So... We're going to skip it. Flight instruments. Check. Altimeters and clocks. One, zero, two, eight. Set and cross check. Radio INS switches. Radio. Radar and transponder. Stand by. Indicator lights. Check. Engine and wing anti ice. Off. Stall warning. Check. Mock airspeed warning. Check. Auto brakes. Check and off. Body gear steering. Arm. Anti skid. On. Autopilot and flight director. Check and off. Takeoff warning. Check. Auto flight enunciators. Check. GPWS, check. Instrument warning, check. Flight director computer selectors, check. Instrument source selectors, normal. Reserve brake valve, closed. Spoilers, down. Static selectors, normal. Oxygen mask and regulator, Check and emergency off. Brake pressure. Check. Stabilizer trim. Check and on. Rudder and aileron trim. 
check. Check was completed. All right. Kind of let them do it. Let's go to the next one. This is what the flight engineer does. And by the way, these were supposedly... Okay, so that... So, okay. So it's an SASL issue, which I don't know what that is, but okay. Uh, I never had this problem till I loaded this one. All right. So I guess I have to wait for the next update. <laughs> So, and I am running one of the latest updates. Uh, what is it now? Oh, I had it written down somewhere. Oh, yeah, right here. 1.2.1.7 is what I'm running. And I think it's a beta, so, but I'm not sure. All right, but anyway, these are done by real, supposedly real people that flew these planes. So, it's pretty cool. Battery on. APU panel, check. Auxiliary power, check. Engine oil quantity, check. Fuel quantity, 171405 pounds. Fuel panel, wait. All right, this is what I, again, it's assuming you're ready to push, start, go. So you're, uh, um, pumps would be on. Now I just turned on uh, this pump for from the uh, fuel tank two automatically when you turn the APU on. APU is up, and what I do is just to make sure I'm in the right version. <laughs> just believe me, folks, I've done this twice now and I'll explain it here in a minute okay that's good okay um, actually I think it's the engine gins that do it as the telltale on it and let me get the bleed air on All right, so now we're up with the APU. So we're gonna go ahead and turn them on. Check and set. Pressurization controls. Check and set. Bleed controls. Wait. Check and set. Hydraulic quantity. Check. EPR computer. Let's see. Okay. Another one. This, they're actually wanting it to be on go around, which a lot of you who might fly the large aircraft, it's what it usually is, is what you're set to. Back in the day, they had a takeoff wet, takeoff dry. Takeoff wet, they were actually feeding water in that actually built more thrust in it. We had somebody on stream. It still is just, I, I, I just can't get my mind to wrap around that throwing the water into the exhaust actually gave it, not the exhaust, but that portion of the engine to give it more thrust, but it does. And uh, they also had dry. Well, TOD, actually, you know what? I can do this another way. A lot easier to see. <laughs> Okay, TOD is not top of descent, folks, when you said it. No. It's takeoff dry. Uh, so that's what we're set for. Then you have continuous climb, cruise, and go around. All right, so let me come over here. And we'll go ahead and check. Indicator lights. Check. Electrical panel. Check and set. Air conditioning controls. Let's see. Fire control and wing overheat panels. Check and set. Equipment cooling. Check. Passenger oxygen. Check. 
Hydraulic panel. Check and set. Fuel jettison panel. Check. Crew oxygen. On. Oxygen mask and regulator. Check and emergency off. ADPs. Off. Checklist completed. Okay, folks, hang on. Uh, Joss D777, uh, where would you like me to post this stream? Because it's up on Twitch. Uh, there is, I can post it on my Discord, but where else? I appreciate it if you put it on Felis. That would be awesome. But, um, I'm not sure where else to post it. Uh, I don't know, um, Spaceman, is there one for you on yours? And since you were so kind, Spaceman, to remind me, I'm going to go ahead and start my ACARS program. Get your anxiety level down. Especially if I was getting ready to... Uh, okay. Um, let see. Search. Click, load, and start. All right, the anxiety level for Spaceman should come down now, especially if I was going from S San Francisco to Narita. <laughs> but I'm not. I'm just going to San Francisco. Okay, uh, hang on. I'll get that link up there. Do, 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 do. Hang on a second, folks. Be with it. Give me one second here. I got to find what I'm looking for. That one. That one. Uh, let's see, Discord, Discord. Well, that's right. I remember what I did with Discord. Oh, I know a place you can see other ones. You can see it at this one here. Oh, wait a minute, let me do it this way. Let's do it the proper way there. Uh... Oh, that was wrong. Let me try that again. Don't mind that loose nut that's trying to play, uh, be, you know, be a captain there. He, he'll, he'll figure it out, right? Uh, let me give you another link there, folks. I haven't seen it in a while. Um, watch it come up just as I type it. You can search through... Uh, my YouTube channel. There are a bunch of 747 200 videos uh, in there as well, uh, as will this in a few days, maybe a week or so. It'll make it over to YouTube. So, um, so we got all of this set and ready to go. We skipped the. Well, we uh, went ahead and said okay on the item. Was it bleed? Air conditioning. Again, these checklists assume pushback is very imminent. In streaming, most people, yes. Me, no. Um, I take time because I want to make sure I got everything right. I don't fly this plane a whole bunch. Um, 
I need to because I really love this plane. So, folks, if you are looking for a good plane out there, <laughs> you know, the 747-200 from Felis is outstanding. Um, very well done in getting all the systems working, everything. So, I can't recommend this enough. I mean, it is phenomenal. Um, just a great job Felis uh, has done with this aircraft. All right, speaking of which, we are to that point where I think I'm ready to push back. Uh, I'm just going to check something over at Pan Am to make sure everything is processing correctly. It is. All right, let's do it, folks. Let's light this firecracker up and see what kind of damage, I mean, what kind of flight we can have. All right, so let's close up some doors. Now, had we had cargo to load and we loaded it manually, folks, if you... I, here, let me just show you what I'm talking about. Had we come in here and loaded it with this button and this button... This goes way unrealistic, and I don't know how you would make it realistic. Totally. Loading an airplane's cargo holds in the bottom, it's uh, dependent on each flight. I mean, it's different every time. So to put a specific time set, it would take a while. Um, but what algorithm or whatever they use to determine the boarding of people watching them at my airport board an a320 or an a319 granted half at least half if not uh two-thirds lower than this hey, you're pretty close <laughs> you're really close they drag their feet folks and if you're one of them i'm sorry i'm gonna call you out <laughs> You drag your feet getting on those planes. Oh, it's funny to watch. All right, so I am going to do something real quick. Get our takeoff information now. So that way we can just taxi. All right, uh, again, load sheet. Puts in our numbers. Okay, our runway of choice to two right isn't it yep. and that is a 12,100 foot long runway airport elevation 13 if memory's right yep okay so you can't set uh, we'll set it to zero runway heading to two four so we'll call it uh, two 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 Two. I don't remember. Do we have a slope uh, sim toolkit? Down one. Okay, runways dry. Outside air temperature. Uh, da, 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 da. Thirteen degrees. Pressure is it still thirty? Thirty six? Thirty seven? Oh man. And the winds, 170 at 12. Okay. What we have set, folks, is the airfield, the weights. Let's go flaps 20. And what that does is gives us our V speeds, our safety speed. So if we lose an engine before 131, it's an abort. After 131, commit to flight. If we lose two engines, tighten your seatbelts up. We're going for a ride, probably. <clears throat> Rotate is 139. V2, clear a 50-foot obstacle, is 152. There's our flaps, retraction speeds. And uh, when we click set speed bugs, here, let me kind of tick it over a little. 
See how they're all bunched up here? Let's watch them. Sweet. Okay, well, once pushed back, we'll set the stave trim to 3.8. We're going to look for an initial pitch of 14 degrees. And once we clear 10,000, we'll accelerate to 312. Okay. If I had to make a criticism of this airplane, it's right here. This weight, albeit not a heavy fuel loaded flight, I'm sorry, it's going to get off longer than 4,300 feet. That's, if I had to, like I said, put a criticism on the plane right there. Landing does good. Takeoff, it is overpowered, in this guy's opinion. Um, I've watched them. Uh, granted, they were loaded from my airport to Europe, so they had a lot more fuel. Well, actually, not much more, but they had at least four hours more fuel on board. Um, and they ate up our runways, guys. <laughs> so, and I'm not talking to 400, folks. I'm talking this one. So, all right. So with that, let's see if there's a checklist or before start. I think we just did them, but let's double check. Boy, these frame rates are really starting to bother me. Okay, so we're waiting for after start. All right. One last check. All the doors are closed. Let's head over here. We should be disconnected. It would help if we got on the Jenner. I'm glad we double checked before clicking it. Otherwise, she goes dead. All right, so we'll disconnect. Hit the ground. Disconnect ground power. Pull the jetway away. Ground power disconnected. Okay, let's get better pushback in here. Ground to cockpit. Please show me where you want to go. Actually, I'm just going to come back like this. Now, the reason for that extra push on it, folks, to get that wheel up. steering set up right. Because <clears throat> remember, I told you it twists. So you want that straight before you start taxing, or you could lend some damage to it. All right, now that I see the tug, I'm going to go ahead and release the chocks. Cockpit to ground. Remove the chocks. All right, and feel us, folks, that are joining the stream. Uh, one, well, the question will come when we get to the Bay Area. When I usually mode. land, it doesn't accept the parking brake anymore. You don't hear parking brake set. Curious if there's a setting. But anyway, enjoy the stream. I hope you all enjoy. Beacons on. Okay. All doors and hatches are closed. Ready to connect. And we're going to go ahead, since it's such a nice day, get this bird ready to start. Let's check fuel pumps. All on. connected and bypass pin inserted. Release parking brake. Parking brake released. 
starting pushback, and you may start engines. Okay, gonna get this thing rolling backwards a little bit. Alright, I think we're having some seep, some issues too with the stream. Oh, there we go, we're back to green. Alright, um, so hopefully things are going well for y'all. Alright, so to start this beast, uh, actually, let's do it this way first. Start valve open. Ready to start the engines. Ready for engine start. You know, I like, oops, sorry, I changed my view there. Now I'm going to that one more often than I used to. All right, so we're gonna use system uh, two for each one, so we'll just hold down. Starting engine three. Start a valve open. And from here, we're gonna watch for 20% and then crank up. He'll tell you to. 20% and two. Fuel on, lights up. Starter off. Now, if you don't get engine stabilized, folks, you started the wrong version. Operation complete. Go ahead and set the parking brake. Engine stabilized. There we go. Parking brake set. Disconnecting tail. Stand by. Okay, with the engine stabilized, we can actually start up number four. Starting engine four. Start a valve open. Okay. Okay, engine four is on. Oh, dang it. I did it again. Sorry, folks. I have to go that way for engine four because I can never get my mouse to set just right so I can click the right one. All right, but uh, this will be on YouTube, folks, uh, in its entirety, hopefully without any uh, interruptions. Fuel on, lights up. Starter off. Tow is disconnected and bypass bin has been removed. Hand signal on the right. We'll see you next time and have a safe flight. Engine stabilized. Okay, with engine stable. Again, in case you didn't hear me before, folks, if you don't hear engine stabilized, check which version. If you're in X-Plane 12, you're running. I've done this twice now. I've had to um, ask the Felis group, what am I doing wrong? And every time they've respectfully told me, try, make sure you're on the right ACF. Lo and behold, that was the problem every time. Thank you guys over at uh, Felis for the kindness. <laughs> I even told them, I know I had this problem before. And like Starting I said, it's been one. a while since I've used Start it. And, uh, that's what it was. And they told me how to not get rid of, but not display the X-Plane 11 aircraft in 12. And that worked. Thank you again for that. We'll give it to you here as well as soon as we get started up. 20% and 2. Fuel on. Lights up. Then we'll watch them spin up again, waiting for stable or starter off, and then stabilized. But it's a real simple thing, folks. If you're struggling like me, always hitting the wrong ACF, it's a great thing to do. Engine stabilized. Okay, let's get number two going now. In the past, I would do a two-engine start. Starting engine two. Start a valve open. 
on the remaining two. I can't seem to get it to do it on the first two to get us going a little quicker. Today, I'm doing all four one by one. By the way, N, N2. there's your N2 gauge. N1 is the second row here. Fuel That's a little... Um, we'll use the official aviation term. Wonky. Weird. <laughs> so, and she'll... I think he said stabilized. Engine stabilized. Oh, there he goes. All right. With the stabilized cue... Let's go ahead and kill the starter valve. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, this is your captain speaking. Should have done that earlier. The entire crew, welcome aboard the Boeing 747 Classic. We will depart shortly after we have our clearance. The cabin crew is finished with their preparations. Uh, for now, I wish you a pleasant flight, and I will be back during the flight with further flight information. Okay. Let's see if that's helping frames any. Nah, not really. <laughs> okay. All right, so we got the engines fired up. So the first thing I do, folks, and it probably is not, I get over here and get these gens on. And I think you could do this while you're cranking up. Uh, wouldn't be surprised if the engineer isn't doing that. Um, I probably should have turned the bus tie off up here, or the galley power. I always forget. I didn't have the trim air open. How dare I? Okay, and... APU lead off. And APU off. Now, another sign you wouldn't see your gen lights go on. Also, your checking of your gens here. I think I was on an APU. You would see them like this when you're up on one, two, three, or four. Um, but they'd go up on your external power or your APU if they were still running. And when you push the power for taxi, don't move. Those are how you'll know. Check and make sure you started the right one. How to uh, know or see only X-Plane 12. Hopefully this doesn't do anything. When you come in, you go to your aircraft. Right here. Show aircraft for older versions of X-Plane. Uncheck it. And they're gone. So you don't run into that issue. Thank you, Felis, for that. That was probably one of the greatest tips given to me ever. There's a few others I'd like, but uh, <laughs> nobody's ever gotten back to me on them. <laughs> All right, so let's get in here and make sure where ADPs can come on. Uh, F cargo heat to normal. All right, let's go back to the checklist, see what I forgot. Light recorder, start switches, beacon lights are on, pressure, start levers, electric pack, door warning. I think we're good. After start checklist. Flight recorder on, start switches, off, beacon lights on, brake pressure, check, start levers, idle detents. Engine and the eyes, off. Electrical panel, check. Back valves, open. Dual warning lights, out. Hydraulic panel, check. Flight recorder, on. After start checklist completed. Flaps one. Flaps 10. Flaps 25. Flaps 20. All right. Oh. 
I'll hit the right button yet. There we go. What did we say? Hang on, folks. 3.8. Okay. Um, what else do we have? Stabilizer probe heats on. That's up top here. Now this is when's a good time to cabin crew arm slides. Uh, decide: Are you going to run with anti ice? All doors are closed and armed. Okay, that's good enough volume level. Okay, flight controls will check. A APU fuel heats off, totalizer set, engineer pilot, F cargo, we're good. Flight controls are all we have left. You will either see your tail number or push to get your yokes back. Just click there. However, what I use is this gauge. I wish this was in the 727. Flight Sim Stunts, welcome aboard. Thanks uh, for uh, following us. We sure appreciate you coming aboard. Any tips, tricks, or anything you might know about this plane? We'd love to hear them. All right, so ailerons. See how it shows your ailerons? Spoilers, because you have spoilerons as well. The 727, and this is no slight to FJ Sim. They just use a different gauge, and it doesn't have the ailerons on it. So I kind of wish they could figure out how to incorporate this one into it because I really like it. But you get your uh, uh, rudder and your elevator on it. You just don't get the ailerons. And I don't know. 727s may not have had it. And then, folks, you don't need it. And you, you really don't even need it for landing because, oh, yeah, you can because you can disconnect from there. I forgot. 727, you can. All right, uh, where are we at? Taxi checklist. Taxi checklist, please. Flaps. Flaps 20. Flaps 20. Take off data, EPR, and airspeed ducks. Set and cross check. Stabilize the trim. Mm. Oh. The other thing you got to do with the stabilizer, hang on, I know what I forgot. As soon as he did that, this green bar has to be here covering this. If it's not, you're going to get that. So, over here is this green band select. High tech, folks, at its best. Set in green band. Chrome <laughs> heat on. Flight controls. Check. Yule dampers. Check. Seat belts and shoulder harness. Check. APU. Off. Fuel heat. Off. Totalizer and gross weight. Set. Flight engineer and pilot panels. Check. Aft cargo heat. Normal. Seat belts and shoulder harness. Check. Taxi checklist completed. All right, folks. Uh, did I not set that one? All right. And then all we got left is the B4 takeoff, which we can do on the way to the uh, room. All right. Let's do it, folks. Parking brake release. JFK ground. Clipper 5 heavy. Push back from 62 from a ready to taxi for 22 right. Roger, taxi 22 right. Flipper 5.
Kevin Reddy. All right, folks, off we go. Again, we're not uh, on VATSIM, uh, sad to say. And I'll explain here. Let me get out of the ramp area here. I think we'll take Alpha. Gonna do a little Brit style. Taxi on the uh, wrong side of the road. <laughs> And they'll tell us we're doing that. Oh, what's on the taxiway up here? Because I know I'm not online. All right, the reason we're not online, folks, is the frame rates. They're really low right now. Uh, Josty777 told us it's a known SA SL issue. Uh, and I think I'm running a beta on this. So that probably is it. Now, I have flown a successful flight. I didn't seem to have any frame rate issues on it. But then again, I may not have been. Uh, I think I, because the next time I was ready to flow, oh, no. I updated it and uh, yeah to it and I didn't seem to have troubles but I am really struggling on frames right now so we'll check uh, at the end of the flight see if there is a update out there on skunk uh, works I think it's called hang on skunk crafts and uh, update it Ipsa. All right. I hope everyone is having a good Friday Eve. It is Thursday, folks. Friday is right on the horizon, including the weekend. Oh, yeah. All right, watch the main landing gears back here, folks. See how they're, wait a minute. Yeah, see how they're turning? That's the body gear steering. All right, let's kick it. So, and that's what we want to have armed to help save wear and tear, turn a little tighter you know, on this uh, airfield or any airfield so that we can, you know, maneuver, uh, especially like our airport, because we're primarily set up for uh, narrow body, let alone these big behemoths. And we did get them for quite a while uh, with cargo. And, uh, yeah, it was kind of neat to watch that body gear and how they could take some of them turns quicker. Let's, uh, let me pull up my taxi chart here. So we'll take, uh, Alpha here to Fox, down to Bravo, and Echo out to, uh, to two right. Okay.
actually I think we'll go up to Echo Alpha. Yeah, a lot of the jags you're seeing here in the scenery, uh, like this down here, that's because I lowered the anti-alias, trying to get some frame rates built beyond that, so just not going to happen today, folks. Full length, uh, we'll use the full length. All right, folks, those of you new to the channel, if you like what you're seeing content-wise or visual-wise, hey, love to see you on upcoming flights. Click that follow button, and uh, you'll get an email uh, uh, when I go live on uh, OBS or Twitch so that you can join in. If you're on our YouTube channel, to find our flight schedule <clears throat> on whatever flight you're on, Drop down to the about. Um, you'll, you'll, I'm sorry. Drop down into the more information below. Look for the link to Twitch. Click there. Look for about, and you'll see our flight schedule there. Um, I may start. Some, I wonder if there's a way I can post that there. I'm gonna have to look into that. Not a uh, whatever they call them there. I'm not. Um, monetized yet so uh, I don't know all that I'm allowed to do tomorrow I will let you know though um, the next video for those of you on uh, uh, YouTube will be uh, out of uh, Clark Air Base in the Philippines uh, those of you in the military Back in the Cold War days, we'll know that base. Um, we're going to fly up to Kaita, up in Hong Kong. So tell your friends, tell everyone, come see Flying with Mike tomorrow. Take off, or stream takeoff time, 1600C. Fortunately, that means you got to do some math and figure out your time zone. All right, let's set the brakes. See, now we don't get parking brakes set. So I don't know what's up with that. That has been, oh Lord, I bought this last year. So it's been an ongoing issue. I don't know what, I got it uh, tick off in the um, X-Plane or in Felis to get it to continuous. But once I leave the gate, I don't get any sounds of uh, parking brake set, parking brake off. 
that may be by choice. Uh, you know, that's you know, I'll give you that one too. All right, so let's do it. Takeoff checks. All right, so icing considerations, cabin alert, transponder. Let's get those two set right now. On. Let's get that down. And we'll go ahead and set it, even though we can't use it. Um, we'll set EPR on the runway. And that's a good one. Okay. Uh, ignition to flight start. Body gear. We'll keep on for now. So let's uh, flight starts. All, both systems have to go up. You can't just do one. Cabin crew, take your seats. One more time with the temp here. 13. Clouds. Okay, I think we're okay. All right, and let me take a look because I think the rest will do on the runway. Boost cross feeds. That I do need to set. And JFK Tower, uh, Clipper 5, ready to go. Runway 22 right. Clipper 5 copies, position and hold. So again, hope your Friday Eve is going well, and uh, hope uh, all is well with you. So, so much for trying to get that swig of coffee. Quick, let's set uh, JFK to fifteen nine. Okay, got our DME. Roger, clear for takeoff, Clipper five. Okay, body gear steering set to off. And let's get these packs off. Lights are on. We do not have a reject takeoff, so here we go. Go to EPR. Wait, wait a minute. Stabilized. Process.
All right, autopilot. Okay, we got our five miles. Cleared, flight level three four zero, clipper four. All right, now let's get her over direct Robbinsville. Okay. My bad, I forgot it's going to maintain 240 in the climb. All right, let's see how that's doing. All right, we are now direct Robbinsville. Get a little up on the radar. Or actually, zero would be good. Okay. After takeoff checklist. Gear lever. Landing and logo lights. Not yet at 10,000. So let's get this to map. Okay, there we go, folks. We're in the climb. And uh, actually, we did everything before 10,000 feet. That is pretty good. I'm getting better at it, folks. Really am. You know what? Let's celebrate. 10, oh, never mind. We got checks to do at 10,000. <clears throat> all right. And then all we got to do is uh, one notch. I do like this, but
number 308 is what I thought it said. Climb. Climb power set. Lap zero and zero. Again, I hope y'all are enjoying the ride. Uh, actually, minus the frame rate deal, we're doing pretty good here, folks. Um, and we'll double check things once we lock in again to an IAS climb. And all that is, folks, just so you all are aware, when you climb uh, in these aircraft, you can set it for VS to a specific vertical speed specific indicated speed in about 27 to 29,000 you'll switch it to mock which will be a specific mock speed setting we're just going to go one notch here in a moment how about boom and then that'll bring our climb see we're starting to come up right now and it's going to maintain this power setting and just pitch the nose up or down to maintain that speed. This actually is different than the 727. It's actually speed controlled. The 727, when you get to altitude and you level off at say 34,000 feet in our case, you have to set the throttles to maintain your speed. That'll happen here on its own. Real quick. Three twelve, so I can actually give it a little bit more. And it's going to adjust to be able to maintain three twelve. I think we're at Robbinsville making our turn to get on the Q430 uh, Expressway down to uh, Larry where we'll get on the... Oh, no. We continue on that for a little bit. Okay. Just kidding. Airway, folks. <laughs> but I hope you all enjoy. Hope you've... Uh... Light Sim, how long have you been flying? Okay. <laughs> Great question. Um, first time chat, by the way. Hey, thanks, uh, Flight Sim Stunts. Uh, appreciate it. Been on the simulator since about 1999. Flying all different types of aircraft. Uh, been on X-Plane uh, 11 uh, since 2020. And X-Plane 12, of course, when it came out last year. Um up until that point, I was with Microsoft quite a bit. Uh, well, actually, that was the only sim in town. Uh, so I flew uh, 98, 2002, 2004, FSX, and uh, never jumped from FSX over to Lockheed. Stayed on FSX, and uh, then finally in 2020 came over to X-Plane. Prior to that, 1980. Two, I actually earned a per private pilot's license in the real world. Was building time to get my instrument commercial. And my dream was to actually fly this aircraft. Or the 400. A uh, sequence of events occurred uh, with a check ride and all that uh, discouraged me quite heavily. And uh, it stopped at about 300 actual flying hours. So quite a while I've uh, been in the flying world. In the real world, I'm also a public safety uh, officer, which means I do airport fire, 
and rescue. I do security and medical calls. So uh, out at uh, at the airport I work at. Long long short answer. <laughs> so, but hey, thanks for asking there, uh, flight sim. All right, we're through eighteen thousand. Okay, so we're working our way up, folks. And basically what I'm going to do in this climb, folks, you're going to see this barber pole start to get closer and closer to our speed. You're also going to see our mock indication here. Let me just kind of zoom on it. Um, get closer and closer to 0.85. Eventually, I am going to set it to mock in the climb, and then our uh, EPR that you see here will say mock eventually. We've probably got another four or 5,000 feet to really see the drastic change here. But again, uh, I'm really thankful for all of you uh, being here with Flying with Mike, and I uh, hope you enjoy. This is what X-Plane has really been working on in this version, are the clouds, the 3D look to them. Uh, I think they've came along quite nicely. The next release due out, uh, which will be X-Plane 12.06, will be the inclusion of Cirrus clouds. So instead of these thick clouds, possibly they'll be cirrus-like. Cirrus and I think they said some other things, but I don't want to misspeak, so check it out over at X-Plane. But uh, yeah, their clouds have gotten much better. And I also heard you'll see uh, these pyramid-looking clouds out there. They're working to either eliminate or to make them more of what they're supposed to be. I don't really know what they were meant to be I my mind thinks one thing it's usually the wrong thing um, and uh, so I can't wait to see those when they come out so but this is X plane 12 for those out there curious uh, if you haven't read the title uh, that's what it is X plane 12 and uh, uh, enjoying it I actually like this more than Microsoft so, but I have not flown 2020, so uh, coming from FSX.
Yeah, unfortunately, uh, with the frame rates like that, folks, we're not going to be able to come up on... Uh, um, I'm trying to figure out why I was able to fly that one flight so well. I uh, flew a few days ago. Interesting. Maybe I didn't have the... Uh, I don't know what I did. But my frames were not this... Uh, this. I mean, 20s are fine, but down in the teens are not conducive for, well, that's a, you gotta have at least 20. So. And it's not like I have a whole lot of things on here draining the computer. All right, so, well, we're just going to keep flying on, folks. And you can see that barber pole getting closer and closer to our indicated speed. We're now 0 0.80. About 0 0.83, 0 0.84, we'll put her into a mock climb. But I have a feeling we're going to be pretty close to that when we, uh, as we climb up here. Now I remember what flight it was. Nice look there at the Jet Clipper Young American. Of course, now I'm clicking the right buttons and ending up in the wrong screens that I set up differently here not long ago to prevent that. All right, so 31, 500 or 400, yeah, 500 going in the back pocket as we continue forward here to 34,000. All right, we're going to get into a mock climb here in a minute. And all that means is, is we're just going to use the Mach number as what we set our speed to. Instead of the indicated speed.
Got a couple more thousand feet to go. And we got about four hours, what is it, 418? 438 to go. So, uh, yeah. just keep on going, folks. So we're going to switch into Mach. Wait, what am I doing? I keep forgetting I can do it. Right up here. Now you see how close that barber pole is now, folks? That's your never exceed or over speed. That's pretty close. Now we'll go into mock at 8.5 and... Go. All right. Folks, we are in cruise. Took us 24 minutes from brake release. To this point right here. High above Pennsylvania. So folks, enjoy the ride. We'll be here the whole time. Chat away. We'd love to hear from you. Love to hear what's going on with you, where you're from. You know, anything, folks. We'd love to hear from you. But we're going to just cruise along here.
All right, folks, we are well, still pushing through West Virginia, Pennsylvania, working our way over to uh, the Bay Area offline with uh, VATS. And, and the main reason being we're not able to maintain the 20, so we have to, uh, you know, we are right now, but uh, throw traffic on here and it'll come right down. So, and then it'll disconnect us, so. But I hope you enjoyed that departure out of JFK. And I uh, look forward to the arrival into the Bay Area. Let's, uh, you know what, let's get a little treat here. Let's see what the weather is doing there. Hey, currently we got uh, our normal 280 approach winds for 290 at 14. Got a few clouds at uh, 600, broken at 14. So currently, we are instrument conditions there, but we're way above minimum, so we're cool. Um, now, I made mention of a 747 mishap that happened yesterday. You may or may not have heard about this in the news. Um, let me see if I can't track it down. Because that loose nut here behind the wheel, and it is the first officer this time he did it. No. <laughs> um, Trying to get the best video possibly out there of this. The upside is the aircraft landed safely. Downside is Boeing has another problem. Well, I guess... Uh, All right, give me a second here. Let me see if I can't cue this up. And uh, take a look at this. All right. We'll do it. We'll, we'll do it a little later on in the video in the uh, run here as well. Um, but yeah, on landing, one of those uh, main gears separated. Now, backstory to this, and I don't remember seeing it. I'll have to reread, you know, watch the video. Um, uh, do that. See what that. No 
Okay. So, the aircraft was intended to go to O'Hare. And, um... Anyway, it took off from Luxembourg. And... They were not able to get the gear to retract. Um, so, they climbed, as it said in the opening there, to 10,000 feet for about 10 minutes, dumped the needed fuel to get under landing weight, and then returned to Luxembourg. And they had an emergency landing set up. So, that's where the video comes from, folks, on the crash trucks that were standing by for this. And as you saw, the landing gear, one of them, one of the middle main gears ripped off on landing. Probably already loose and why it didn't close. So, yeah. Interesting mishap. Again, the, the upside here is, okay, aside from something that got hit by the wheel, you know, bouncing along down the runway, the, the strut, um, there were no injuries to crew or to those on the ground. Folks, in the grand scheme, that's a great day when you have an emergency like that. Um, so, don't like seeing that, and I'm sure Boeing didn't like seeing that, because now that's going to open up a can of worms, possibly. But, um, so yeah, there you go, folks. Little mishap that happened uh, on the 14th of May. Now, imagine this one. Let's say that the landing gear retracted fine. No apparent issue in the cockpit with anything. On they go to O'Hare. As they come in, the landing gear comes out. If the, as long as the landing gear comes out, again, there's no issue in the cockpit. If it's down locked, unless somebody happens to say, uh, you got a problem there, Cargo Lux, um, until he lands and one of the gears shears off. So, yeah, um, interesting mishap. Um, and uh, thankfully, no injuries. So, uh, Again, we'll show that a little later as we get closer to San Francisco, just for any new arrivals to the stream. But uh, again, folks, uh, welcome aboard uh, Flight Clipper Flight 5. We're headed from Jeff K, JFK, over to SFO, otherwise known as San Francisco. And uh, made mention to this earlier of some of the fixes coming and interesting things to X-Plane 12. That's not 100% the pyramiding, but a little bit. You can see how this cloud over here looks. That's a little bit of what we're talking about. Boy, when you get out over the ocean, they look like pyramid clouds dotted like that in the middle. What they're supposed to represent, I don't know, but, um, yeah, you see them more prevalent over the oceans. Um, and they're working on that, and supposedly they may have a fix as they introduce cirrus clouds into the next general release coming, 0 0.6, or 0 0.06 for X-Plane 12. So stay tuned for that one. I'm just looking at a couple of things here. But yeah, that was an interesting video I watched this morning at work, waiting uh, for the infamous 7.30 time to go home bell to go off.
All right, so uh, again, a welcome in. If you're new to the stream, hey, we'd love you to smash follow. Tomorrow's flight will be from the Philippines over to Kai Tai in uh, Hong Kong. So, and it will be in this aircraft. So uh, look forward to seeing you all there. If you click uh, follow, you'll get an email letting you know when we go live. Um, so look forward to seeing you all there tomorrow. Oh, you know what we forgot to do in our pre-flight? Got to turn on the lights over here. He needs to wake up that first officer. There we go. So, and there's the Jet Clipper Young American. Or Young America, my bad. But uh, if you've been with X-Plane and watched X-Plane 12 over the beta and general release period they're in now, um, the clouds, these 3D clouds have really um, improved greatly. So... Well, I am going to sit back and relax here as well, folks. Uh, we got four hours to go to the Bay Area. And uh, I know many of you were looking forward to a run into the Gateway City. But uh, yeah, you know how scheduling can be with uh, airlines. And they decided to send us over to San Francisco. So I'm going to back off the mic here for a little bit, and uh, we'll be back with you all uh, here shortly. I'll be watching the chat, though, so don't worry. I'm not going too far. But I'm here for you all. Love to chat with you. See where you're all from. See uh, how your uh, Friday Eve is going and what kind of weekend uh, festivities you all have. So, on we go with four to go.
All right, folks, we continue on towards um, SFO. Let me put this on altitude hold. Um, when we're ready for the step climb here, oh, in about... Oh, 58 miles. Um, we'll go back to altitude select and select uh, 36,000. See how our fuel burn's doing. Basically, what we're looking to get down to is about 26, 27,000. And then we'll come off. We'll turn these two valves off. And uh, go into a more tank to engine setup here. So, but for now, we got to burn everything down together. So, Alright, let's kind of get an idea of what we have ahead of us. Alright, so where are we? That's not what I wanted to do. Okay, 17. Look, you know what? Let's. Set up uh, sixteen three. Pretty sure we're still out of range. We're on this one seventeen ten. Just looking around here, folks. Really annoys me when it does that.
Okay, to creep we have... 32 to go, and a creep will set for 36,000. And then basically from there we have till Denver, about two and a half hours past that, uh, where we'll climb up to 38,000. Should, unless I've got a frequency wrong, we should begin picking up um, Rickyard here soon. We're going to go ahead and start our step climb. That throws me off every time, folks. I think I'm set for 400 and I'm really set for 200.
Uh, we got about 46 miles over to Brickyard, and then uh, work our way towards uh, Falcon, which is in uh, Denver. Like I said, it's about two hours away from here, but we'll see how we do with these speeds. Uh, most of the aircraft we fly on a routine basis don't fly at these uh, paces, so we'll kind of see how we do across here. And we're getting close. Let's see how close. Yeah, we got about another 10,000 pounds of fuel to burn off. And then we'll uh, get more geared. Uh, we'll set our cross feeds up. So figure about another 30 minutes or so and uh, we'll be doing some more things inside here. But for now, we're just kind of monitoring. That's pretty much what flights are, folks. Once you get them in the air, you're monitoring. Close that up for now. And... Okay, the compartments look pretty good. Now let's see, get it cooled down a little bit up here in the cockpit. Always have that sun in front of you, folks, so that's why.
So, are you guys still there? Hope you are. We're just cruising along here. 36,000, 3 hours, 20 minutes to go. And, uh... So far, pretty decent flight. Minus this, uh, as, uh... We were told earlier, uh, this SASL issue, I guess, is eating up frame rates. And, uh... Yeah, we, uh, unfortunately are right at the minimum mark for VATSIM, so hence why we're not up on VATSIM. Hopefully that gets uh, corrected here soon, because that may impede tomorrow's flight. But other than that, folks, we're cruising along here with Pan Am Virtual and uh, heading to San Francisco.
All right, folks, just so you're aware, uh, or let you know, I am aware of all of the disconnects that have occurred, all the issues with the stream. Um, just so you know, as a fail safe, it is being recorded. Uh, so it will be on YouTube here shortly uh, once the aircraft is on the ground. Um, all I can do is apologize for how horrible uh, Charter Spectrum is in their service. Matter of fact, we just probably disconnected again. So hopefully um, this will get worked out one day by not holding my breath on it. So for those of you still on YouTube, you're getting the connection. I just wanted to let you know we are aware and trying to get Charter to actually get off their lazy butt fix this internet out here in our town. So, anyway, I'm going to stay quiet while we go through this, folks, because the longer I talk, the madder I get at Charter, and you all don't need that on this stream. We're out here to relax, so, uh, uh, and that's what we're going to do. So, we'll just keep cruising on, and hopefully Charter will get its act together and fix the internet like it's supposed to.
Alright folks, back with you. The CEO has uh, contacted our internet provider and I will let you know who they are. Spectrum. So I feel sorry, I feel for you if that's who you're with. Hopefully, they say they're sending a technician Saturday and hopefully, hopefully these internet drops were getting stopped. But uh, anyway, um, we are connected for at least the 50th time. I haven't gone in to see how many actual VODs are there on Twitch on this flight. We may set a record. Um, obviously, it's a longer flight. Why it would. Um, but uh, again, to see it um, without all the drops. Give it about a week and I should have it up on YouTube. I may opt to just throw it up quicker and uh that way you all can see the flight in its entirety hopefully without breaks um obs disconnects so i don't know if that is coming about because of the internet drops or if it's just the system being overloaded i don't know but um really kind of curious these uh, low frame rates on this aircraft. So, because I know I flew. Granted, I didn't stream the flight or record it, but I was on VATSIM and all a couple of days ago, and we didn't have any frame rate issues. We were in the 30s for the most part, and I know it was the latest, greatest. So, I don't know. So, but uh, we'll see how this SASL thing, who, what, you know, is it X plane? Is it Felis? I don't know. But, folks, one thing I can tell you I do recommend this aircraft. Uh, if you're a 747, you know, love them like I do, this is a phenomenal aircraft uh, they have I mean they have a fully functioning aircraft in the cockpit the only downside and it's an actual good thing you have to be able to fly an aircraft of three crew members by yourself so there in itself lies a challenge but uh, most of you that love these kind of planes, it's a piece of cake. So, but I, I, I can't recommend this plane enough, folks. And unfortunately, I know it doesn't get a lot of airtime. One of the reasons being the queen of the sky, folks, albeit back in the 70s and 80s did do a lot of domestic hauls here in the United States Japan still flies 747s and wide bodies all over the Far East I shouldn't just limit it to Japan I mean it's unreal so and they're short haul especially Japan because let's get real Japan pretty much a short haul flight out of Tokyo so no no disrespect meant there with that it's just amazing the amount I mean Cathay Pacific folks other than their uh, sister company which I think now they fully own Dragon Air folks they didn't have anything less than a wide body and they flew short haul with it so so if you're into the heavy iron like this aircraft, folks, you aren't going to go wrong with Felis and X-Plane 12. Um, just got to get past this hiccup that I'm having right now. And, you know, it could very well be the livery I'm pushing out. So I don't know because I flew for Northwest a few days ago and had no troubles with that. All right, I think we're reaching about the halfway point, folks. Um, let me look at Sim Toolkit. 
Now we're generally in the halfway point. We just crossed Kansas City. Um, and uh, we are showing just under three hours to go. So we're in the ballpark for the halfway point. So um, we'll just kind of relax, enjoy as the music goes on folks those of you uh home enjoying thursday eve getting ready for the good old friday and the weekend uh hope we're setting a good tone for you it made it through another week folks so we'll kind of kick back relax here and uh keep trying to get the uh Hopefully keep the internet going strong. Usually after about an hour of this up, down, up, down, up, down, up, down, it works fine. So we'll see. But again, probably will push maybe the video due out in the next day or two back a little further and maybe run this one quicker. All right. So folks, we'll kind of stay on the quiet side here. Keep an eyeball out on chat and... Uh, Fingers crossed we don't add to the VOD list. <laughs> so, all right, folks. Thanks again for flying with Mike. If you're new, click follow. Hey, that way you'll know we, with an email when we're uh, flying again.
All right, well, I just noticed another disconnect from OBS, so always so much fun with OBS. Oh, well, again, folks, if you want to see this, hopefully without interruption, I've not been told there has been any. Uh, catch it on YouTube when it comes out in a day or two. Um, I'm pretty sure we're going to set a record with how many VODs are created off this video. Um, I'm sure we're at like seven or eight now, so uh, my apologies. i really trying to tweak um, OBS so that it quits this and uh, asking some questions about the frame rate issue. So hopefully we get some answers. Um, yeah, it's just, well, I, I, I may just cancel tomorrow and, uh, deal with getting the internet at least stabilized and then maybe we can figure out Twitch until then we'll just keep doing the best that we can folks. So, um, currently two hours, 45 minutes out and, uh, once we get over Falcon, we'll uh, step, make our last step climb. Falcon is in the Denver area for those curious. 13.7, let's put up here. And... What is Falcon? Sixteen decimal three. So, my apologies again for such a uh, for a stream that just. I mean, I, I'm terrified to look at how many have already come up. I might as well. All right. How many? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. I do believe, folks, that is a record for flying with Mike and how many VODs one video can kick out. You know, it's amazing. Oh, gosh what was that about a month or two three ago we flew across the Atlantic zero drops today we can't even get across the country go figure <laughs> so folks like I said enjoy the um, YouTube video I know it's long, folks. It's going to be five plus hours, maybe close to six. But enjoy that, folks, because it should, in put that in air quotes, huge air quotes, should be without in interruption. And the only interruptions you'll know is because I said something. If I would stay quiet, you'd never know. So... Let's roll on. We're trying to find out why the frame rates are the way they are. If it's potentially the livery, it is different than what I flew a few days ago. Everything else aside, that could be the issue. Um, clouds, obviously. Well, no, we had a lot of clouds on that until we got about halfway to uh, Korea. And uh, then we went into clear skies. So, who knows? Who knows what the actual cause is right now? Nobody's answering me over at Felis, but again, hey, they're busy. I get it. So, but folks, like I said earlier, I highly recommend this air, uh, aircraft. Uh, if you want to get your paws on it, get it in your hangars and flying it, learning it, flying it. Um, there's how you get a hold of it, X-Plane 12 and X-Plane 11. Um, so, uh, 
you can fly it with FMCs, you can fly it with the SIVA INS system or the LTN INS. The only reason, folks, I don't use those two is because many years ago, and it's not Felis, uh, it was actually the SIVA um, that you could buy uh, for, oh, I want to call it better pushback, but I don't remember, um, pushback approved or something like that, 747, 200, back in the century of flight days. Um, I bought it, installed it, loved it. Don't get me wrong, I loved it. But then one day I shut the plane down abruptly. I could have had a power outage. <laughs> Our town is notorious for that too. Um, as many of yours are, don't get me wrong. <laughs> I'm not. <laughs> so um, I don't remember. But anyway, when I brought it back up, it had an error code in the SIVA unit, like you would expect an error. I could never clear it up and never use it again. So, out the sim it went, in came this uh, freeware, some, something FMC don't, a uh, long time ago, folks. I haven't ever wanted to go back to the INS. The other drawback I had with it, and again, you gotta have time, and that's where the problem came in. It takes a good 30 minutes, folks, to get the SIVA aligned. First off, pre-flighted, aligned, loaded, and then ready to go. And then, as Spaceman allu alluded to early on, then you got to do the DME updates and all of that across. And folks, across, that gets, that gets to be a challenge. It's a lot of work. And uh, so I don't want to scare you away. I just want you to understand what's involved with the older technology. Don't know anything about the LTN. So, and the other downside to SIVA was nine waypoints only. There was another version that came out that allowed 27. You could use each one to load up all your flight plan routes your uh, uh, coordinates, but uh, I, I don't remember the whole names and stuff like that. So that is why I don't use it. Um, it really, I mean, it's already, what was it? An hour and 10 minutes just going through what we had. And I had some issues prior that I had to work out. That's why we were slightly late getting online, but that's why, folks, I don't use the SIVA or the LTN. Um, it's already a lengthy pre-flight to get this bird ready to go. Add to it that. Hence, when you have three hands inside of the airplane, makes it a lot easier to get the job done and get the plane ready to go. Hence, why the front flight engineer gets there an hour and a half early, set up his as much as he can for the pilots and get things rolling so when they get there they're they can get out of the you know shoots as quickly as possible well on schedule let's put it that way so anyway long short story there folks uh, that's why I don't use those and I stick with the FMC um, it's not a slight against them at all. It's just, it really posed to be that day. And I really needed to fly. And uh, it was a bad day all around at work and all. And I relieve a lot of stress right here, folks. When I used to fly private aircraft, you get, I mean, seriously, folks, you get off the ground and you head out even if you're just heading out to do touch and goes at another airport or do a couple you know stalls or you know whatever oh the stress release that came off me was um, unimaginable to describe so i miss that it's just so expensive i can't get back into it and it, you know it's me it's all my fault i'm not here don't send me any cheese with all this whining um, 
I know it's me. And uh, I, I'm thankful every day to get into the flight sim here and at least, <clears throat> at least detach like I did when I took off in a Tomahawk or a Piper Warrior or a Skylane. Um, or my fa one of my favorites was the Archer and the Arrow. Um, just love those two planes. Um, but again, they're pricey, folks. They're a little expensive to rent. So, but they were fun to fly. And even the Saratoga, the couple times I flew it, uh, just on, I uh, just. It didn't matter, folks. It just, just getting into the air was all I needed. And uh, unfortunately, you know, I let my head get a, you know, I let a bad check ride get into my head. And by check ride, I do not mean I was going for my instrument ticket or my commercial. When you're in training, there's intermediate check rides to see how you're doing and where we need to work on. <laughs> I felt when I came out of that check ride like I needed to go back to student pilot. Let that get into my head and fester. Oh well. And a few other stupid things that happen to people in their. Uh, early 20s late te you know, late teens early 20s that didn't help so but again it's all on me not on anyone else it's just it's all ha it's all me and again don't send me any cheese don't need any although I like cheese don't get me wrong don't need any cheese with all this whining so if it sounds like whining All right, folks, enough of that. Let's put that behind us, <laughs> like I've been trying for 40 years, 30, 40 years. By the way, folks, just to pull it back slightly, this was my goal, the Fly 747s. Oh, I would have loved to have gotten into the Air Force and flown an F-15. At the time, I'd tell you, I don't ever want to fly a 130 or a cargo plane. I'd have probably liked those eventually once I got into the program. But yeah, this was my goal. But you know, I think God had a different plan for me. He closed that door on me. He opened up so many other doors for me. That's how life is, folks. One door closes. Sometimes many doors open. Sometimes just another door opens to get you there to then get another door to move you this way. So, welcome to life. So, and I'm not going to complain because the outcome, I, I, I mean, married for 30 years, three beautiful daughters, doing great, um, Right there, folks, is success. And uh, hard to complain when you look that way. I watch people do it all the time at work and everywhere else. But that is success, folks. Okay, looking at the DME, we're 30 miles um, out of Hill City. Yeah, Hill City, Kansas. I think that's, yeah, Kansas. Uh, then we'll start uh, picking up 
a uh, good old Falcon in Denver VOR. You know, I'm going to do this again. Let me see uh, how many viewers we have. Um, in case you didn't catch this because of all the different... Uh, uh, I'm going to run a video. There was a mishap last couple of days in uh, Luxembourg with a 747 you may or may not have heard of. Let me run this video. First, make sure... Uh, sorry about that, folks. Hitting the wrong gut. Crazy nut behind the wheel. Holy mackerel. Going every which way but loose. <laughs> oh, boy. Perfect. All right. All right, just wanted to make sure it hadn't gotten lost with all of the disconnects. I want you to watch a video, folks. And uh, this is a mishap of a 747, I believe it's a 400, uh, in Luxembourg the last few days. Give you a couple seconds to read that. Okay, the key to this, folks, is right here, this last sentence. That's what we can hope from any mishap. No injuries. Here it is. Don't know what it hit, folks. <laughs> By the way, that's not a good thing. Let me see if there's any more after this. I stopped it last time. I don't think so. Again, there is the incident on Sunday the 14th. Cargo Lux 747-400 lost part of its main landing gear. Upside again, last sentence, no injuries. Isn't that amazing? Unfortunately for Boeing, that's another, <laughs> another thing to answer to. But yeah, and folks, that's the perspective I get it as a airport firefighter, airport security, airport medic, uh, not medic, but uh, EMS. Um, <clears throat> this is what we, that's the, sometimes what we get to see. Thankfully, this guy has it. I've had a belly landing of a Comanche single or a single engine. Um, what else we had? Something else. Oh, and then in the eighties, my 767. Granted, I was a dispatcher for that one. Uh, came in with one of the main gears. Not, not coming out. So, anyway, folks, welcome to aviation, and Boeing has a yet another headache to deal with. But anyway, I uh, hope you enjoyed that as we approach Denver. I may try to play it again before top of descent, but folks, when you're in an aircraft of a crew member, crew of three in the cockpit and you're the only one <laughs> sometimes taking it easy is not a bad thing so I 
and I will be right back.
All right, folks, we're back. Just looking at a couple of things here, folks, as we approach Denver. We're about uh, 70 or so miles out. Then we begin setting our sights on the Bay City. Oh, and we got a step climb if memory serves. Thirty-eight thousand. <clears throat> All right, real quick, folks. How you do a step climb here? It's actually super simple. What I do: drop it down when you're close to altitude select. Move it right up to thirty-eight thousand. Then head over here. I did not do this on the last step climb. Pressure up to 39,000. That accounts for the differences in the air pressures uh, from 2992. And you can see we're adding pressure and all that good stuff. I don't know, adding pressure. <clears throat> the cabin is being pressurized at about 500 feet a minute as we climb to handle that uh, altitude. And I know I'm still saying it wrong, <clears throat> but yeah, that's what we're doing. And let's just push up here. Looking like 
24. Let me see what 24 is. All right, folks, so there you go. We're about 300 feet away from our top altitude. And we now stand uh, I think I'm wrong here folks I think we're a hundred mile wait a minute uh, what where oh I misread my gauges. We're about 106 miles out. Okay, that's fine. Let's uh, punch over here. We got fuel to take care of, I'm pretty sure. Okay, we're pretty much even. So what I'm going to do... We've never tried this before. Let's just... Allow about a 4,000 pound burn off these outer tanks and see if we can't. I'm watching my engine gauges over here. And see if we can't. <clears throat> get back into a position where I can then open the reserve valves at the the appropriate time because basically you want your fuel tanks closest to the center of the aircraft with air fuel in them now you're going to empty your center tank but the wing the ones in the wing closest to the fuselage keep them heavier so you're not putting so much weight on the tips Now the fun comes in if we do fly to Narita. I will most likely not be streaming that, folks. That's a 12, 10 to 12 hour flight. Um, but we'll be heavily loaded with center fuel. We'll use a scavenge pump. I mean, we're going to use a lot of things watching to see here. I'm going to come back in a few minutes. And we're getting a real hard... Yeah, see, it's just... I think the clouds may have a little to do with it, but whatever this other issue is, I don't know. And I'm not getting any feedback from Felis's group. So, you know, and I, you know, I'll be totally honest. I will hope for the best. We'll see.
All right, well, we'll just continue on, folks. Let me just look back. Perfect, that's what I'm looking for. We'll get them down around 15. And then we'll kick the pumps in and start setting this up for the reserve tanks to be dumped in uh, once we get closer to top of descent. So, folks, we're on our way, doing pretty good here. Um, like I said, I wish I could be on VATSIM, but you've seen the frame rates over there. We've dropped into the lower teens and as high as the upper 20s. And folks, 20 is the limit with X-Pilot. If you can't keep 20, it's not going to keep you connected. <clears throat> so, got to figure out what's causing that issue with this plane. And it very well could be the plane. It very well could be something else. Who knows? But uh, it is what it is. So, we'll keep trucking on here. Um, 70 miles from Falcon. Which is... Denver doesn't even look like it on the... Well, I guess that could be. Uh, when you look at it on the air charts... Here, let me uh, show you what I mean. And after Falcon, we're going to begin thinking through the approach. So there you go, folks. Gives you an idea where we are, um, what we have ahead of us, which is uh, two hours to fly. And this gives us the time to figure it out. Uh, we'll give you a couple of websites that you can go to. Um, well, one website it'll help if you're on fat sim though it could hinder because we've run into this now we've spotlighted it one day i think it was jfk um <clears throat> where real world said this is how this airport is gonna operate expect these runways for arrival these runways for takeoffs so forth that sim said po po to that and went a whole different way so that unfortunately we can't do anything about um just gotta keep that always in the back of your mind and it's a shame um that if you're gonna produce adises you better think long and hard there's reasons why the real world does what it does and uh, not because necessarily the winds favor what you want I've seen it at my airport and I know what's going on with JFK LaGuardia and Newark Teterboro all of them why it is what it is doesn't take a brain a rocket scientist to figure it out either <clears throat> All right, so there's where we are right now, folks, coming into Falcon. And like I said, once we cross over Denver, we'll uh, look a little deeper into what we're going to do in good old San Francisco. Okay, so I'm going to get an early jump on this, get an idea... Obviously, we're coming in on the two eights. Uh, departures uh, both ways, two eights and arrivals. I don't see where they're spe specifying. Oh, okay. So currently, the real world ATIS, folks. This will give you an idea what I'm talking about. This is the real world ATIS US. 
Okay, you can find these other ways too, folks. Uh, but this is how the digital, when you see D ATIS up in the ATIS box, you can go to this site in the US and its territories and you can um, get a ballpark idea of what's going on. Albeit, it'll, it possibly could change slightly as you get closer to top of descent or even at descent, you know, who knows? But it's a good way to get an idea. Okay, so guys, we're gonna plan two weights. Now, what are we gonna plan for the two weights? The RNAV, the ILS, the what? Well, the nice thing is usually the aircraft dictates, but today, if you're flying a 737-800 or an Airbus in there, you can run RNAV approaches or you can do visuals uh, unfortunately I actually have a hard time finding runway sometimes in X planes so so looking at that going to DATIS then you just select up in the top select facility we got uh, as of 2156 current you know that's one thing missing on here what the current time is Huh. Well, I have something for that. Hang on. Current time is 22. So, folks, we're just talking a few minutes ago. This was uh, voiced. So, winds are currently 260, 15, 10 miles visibility, a few clouds at 600, scattered at 1500, and a temperature of 17 and a dew point of 11. Pretty decent. Now, the part we're interested in, simultaneous charted visual flight procedures. In use. Landing to a left, to a right, departing to a left, to a right. One right, 19 left closed. One left, 19 right. Oh, both of the ones, both uh, north-south runways are closed taxiway B, and so forth. You can read it if you go to it. <clears throat> if you're on YouTube, folks, guess what? It'll be totally different, but you get the, the gist of, the, of the, what's going on here. <laughs> uh, however, if you do read this, let me, let me pull this up, folks. Hang on. Stand by. <laughs> Oh, uh, oh! let me find it. Hang on, hang on. All right, folks, this is what it looks like, a D-80. And basically, I think for flight, you can do this on and other things. I want you to read that. This is what is currently transmitting there. Now, to get the humor that I see in this a little bit, um, you had to watch another video. Um, and I don't remember how it goes, how to, how to even find it. <clears throat> so, somebody taxis out. I, it's either, uh, I'm not even gonna, I, I'm gonna say I think a 737, but it could have been an Airbus. Actually, irrelevant for why it was funny. Well, well, yeah, we could say it's funny. Little, I don't know if it was heated or what, but a real big exchange between tower and this aircraft. Okay, the aircraft uh, is coming up. They, and it's this little part right here, departing aircraft, get numbers, that's what that is, and brief you know, your pilot brief for takeoff, both runways, 2228 two, left and 28 right. Says it right in the 80s, because what happened is he taxis up the normal way up. They were told one runway, I think it was 28 right. Tower changed it to 28 left. They weren't set up for it. They said, we need two minutes to get set up. 
they got aircraft coming in, folks. So they're trying to sequence you in. So they're giving, they actually got on the runway. That's what it was. They had them get off, go, I mean, it was amazing. <laughs> so that's why this is in this ATIS. Because they want you, the pilot, ready to go either runway. They don't want to hear it. So that's when that secondary flight plan comes into play. Okay, we'll go off that runway. We're set. Push a button. We briefed it. We're good. That's interesting. Wow. <laughs> oh my gosh. I would never have thought they'd put that in an ATIS. But they did. <laughs> Anyway, that's what the ATIS looks like when you go there, folks. And by the way, that's what we're going to be dealing with for the most part to get in there. Uh, let's see, browser. So, wow. <laughs> Who'd have thought? Five miles to Denver, folks, and then we make the turn. Correction. Oh, we're still inbound. All right, but we'll begin our thought process you know as we go we'll show it to you on charts or possibly sim toolkit let me uh, go back check my fuel tanks 16 we're almost there folks i want to be in the 15s when i bring the uh tank two tank three back online now the okay i i, I can hear a question in some people's minds formulating why are those engines still running? Okay. Real quick fuel management here. Let me kind of zero in on this panel. All right. See these nice little lines, folks? These are pipes. Imagine them as the piping going through the wing to the engines, the center tanks. Okay. These are your cross feeds, meaning as long as they're connected up and down, you see how the piping connects, you're flowing fuel. Okay, two, this, so for instance, if I shut this one down even, this tank will power all four engines. Of course, go down quite rapidly. Um, or what I've done here is this tank is not feeding the pipe between all the uh, engines. Neither is this tank. Of course, this one's empty. Just the two outer wing tanks. <coughs> it's just a matter of following the lines. So as long as we're showing them connected, we're good. Why isn't the reserve tanks being used? Well, see, the line isn't connected into number one or number four. When we open those closer to descent, they'll feed one and four, but not the two middle ones. So that's why I'm trying to get those down below 3,700 pounds, lower or down so when they fill that 3,700 pounds in it's not going to make the wing tips heavier than the strut. You want the middle, those inner tanks, like I said, heavier than the outer ones. And then you want your reserves bled in. It's kind of complicated, but if you follow the chart right in front of you, get an idea. You'll see when we switch set up here in a few but that kind of gives you an idea and again it'll make more a little more sense when I take them out of all tanks or all engines all tanks and into a different configuration Because there is a configuration we call tank to engine, meaning this tank, this engine, or this tank, this engine, this tank, 
this engine. So, and that's what we want when we're landing. So, and there's a couple ways to do it. Um, I don't like the one, and it, it, again, it's just me, folks. It's not procedure that I don't like. I just, it makes me a little nervous. But we'll explain it when we get to it. We're not far from the next iteration of what we go to. I know it's kind of confusing right now, but hopefully I can make it make sense here once we get to that point. But again, welcome to Flying with Mike. What a day, and I, you know what, never even thought about this. I wonder how the ACARS program is dealing with all of those internet hiccups we had. Hopefully, it's going to deal with it. Otherwise, we'll manually file the flight plan. Didn't even think about that. Until now. Alright. Um, I'm going to set 290. That's going to be my speed I go for, folks. As we start down and we throttle back to maintain the mock of a well, we'll hit that indicated speed and then transition into maintaining that going down with our VS. Still good hour away. Let's see, what are we showing? About an hour and 50 minutes. So about 50 minutes we're going to really be hot and heavy. So let's start with, uh, okay, we know the ATIS, two weights. So let's start getting in that groove, shall we? All right, back with charts. So I'm not going to use that uh, uh, SIM toolkit, even though it's exactly the same. Um, and we're going to go and figure out what approach do we want to do. Let me see if uh, well, right now it looks like San Francisco is not online. San Francisco radio is out to Hawaii, but not in San Francisco proper. Oakland Center is not online. And again, 17 frame rates, 18 will not cut. All right, no ATIS from VATSIM, even though I don't care what they say right now because we're not using them. So again, convert, let's see, we have simultaneous charted visual procedures in use. Okay, that's cool. For two eight left and right. I'm gonna go ahead. Now here is our approach. Let's take a look at that. Diamond 5 RNAV approach. I don't know if there is a uh, the old Coldale, if that's still around. Oop, wrong one. Oop, charts, star. Hey, okay, there's a non RNAV. Modesto, that could work. You know what? We may go with that. Etha. Well, I know Archie will transition us to the uh, uh, approaches. And these are strictly VOR to VOR to VOR approaches. If you notice, you go off of Coldale, which 
is one of our fixes, right? Yes. Okay, so you go off of Coldale. Fly 246 to about Tros. Kyla, pick up Modesta. Fly in 244. Out 245 to Seeds, where you pick up Woodside. And come down. So you're VOR to VOR to VOR. The old. Look at how you used to do this. Now you have our nav, which... Huh. I can just program it like I did in the FMC. Let's pull that up, see how it translates. Actually, we don't have it up here. I take that back. We didn't load this yet. So we can put Coldale in, or Modesto. Alright, so that looks like a good star. So let's do this. We'll go back to charts. I'm going to get rid of diamond. Okay, let me go back. Let me do that and cancel. All right. Uh, Modesta. O A L. And Inyo is part of it. So that's cool. All right. So we're going to come off Modesto, track into Tros. Actually, Inyo. And then we'll be able to pick up Modesto. Follow it out to seeds. Make our altitude of 11,000. And uh, continue descent, because Archie, I think, is seven. And then we'll turn in on our approach. Sound cool? So we got that figured out. All right. So it's going to be now from here where we got to figure things out. Archie Mitha. All right. We know it's going to be the two weights. A lot of times, uh, before we get into this, let's cancel that. Let's look at the airport. We have 11,300, 400, 11,800 to 900. <clears throat> okay. So a lot of times we land over here, hit S, come over and work our way over to our parking. Okay. Or we can land here, maybe get off a little later. I'm going to go ahead and shoot for the 28 right. Okay, we're going to shoot for that. We're not going to have anyone to tell us any different. Okay, so let's pull, put that in here. So 28 right, ILS, ILS, ILS. Oops, right up here. Okay, so we have. Dumba Archie. Take it. All right, so there you have it, folks. So we'll come in from Seeds to Archie to Gur. Is that Sipa? Oh, I'm sorry, down to Dumba, then on to the localizer in the end. That's how easy this program is for flight simmers. You're doing this either on an EFB or out of your charts trying to figure this out otherwise. But you you know, most pilots they like truck drivers, if you will. You get used to routes. You get a general feel for what you gotta do. Alright, so we got our initial setup. We just don't have this thing, the up at the box setup, as uh, some simmers call it. Again, OAL Inyo. <clears throat> Not a bad deal. Go to departure, arrival, D E P A R R, select arrival, K S F O. I'll go and select this first, and then my transition. And then my ILS and my um, 
transition as well there. And then I'm going to hit execute. Go back the legs, clear it up. Looks good. Okay. But. <clears throat> but. <laughs> Here's where the fun comes in. Now, let's go pull uh, Modesto 9. Okay, so coming in from uh, Coldale, Inyo, that's all good. Um, Kayla, Tros, Modesto, we're still good. Left, grown, seeds, 11,000 feet. One, one, zero, zero, zero. Granted, it's 700 feet off. I do not see a speed associated with it. Cool. Okay, next page. Okay, then we come down to Archie. Okay, coming on the chart here. Archie, mandatory, 7,000. We got 7,000. Zild, above 6,000. Gur, above 5,000. We're looking good so far. Dumba, I believe, is above 4,000. Then we come to Sipa. Thought that was a hard 3,000. But I guess it's above. Okay. And then we come down here to Axma. Axma is actually 1,800 feet. That's a solid altitude, folks. So. Okay. What that's going to do is help us to get closer to these numbers as we're descending. Now, mind you, I could be flying this all the way from Coldale in on the VOR. Basically meaning, okay, you can't see it right now, so hang on. So how would I do that? I would come up here, make this go to switch to radio. Okay, so now we can't INS, but we can VOR lock. So coming off, let me get that back up here. Okay, so coming off Coldale, 117.7, we'd fly 246 course to Enyo, to Kyla. Here, I would have Modesto tuned in and right on to the 244 inbound, outbound 245, 32 miles. At about 33 miles, I'd make sure whatever I'm tracking on, which in this case would be this VOR, is set to Woodside, intercept, and fly down to 236 to Archie. Descending the whole time to set, you see what I'm saying, how this works? That's how you would do it. We're gonna, I think, do that, folks, just because, why not? We can't be on VATSIM, so they can't screw with me. Um, and change thing. Oh, we're going to have you land on the ones now. I don't think so. So we're coming in per the um, current ATIS and uh, should be a fun arrival. Um, <clears throat> now we're not going to go to Mitha because we're going to be vectored. We would be sent from here to Dumba and then on to the approach. All right. Pretty simple. So let's take a look now. Okay, so we're doing the Modesta 9. Okay, there's our D ATIS telling us we can get the ATIS via digital means, our cell phones, laptops, EFBs. Well, EFB would be tied to avionics, but anyway, you can get them outside the plane so you're prepared. But inbound, these are our frequencies for it. Airport's 13 feet above sea level. 18,000 feet's transition. All that means, folks, for those of you a little new to aviation, transition is where we take our altimeter and uh, I don't have it right up here, so hang on. 
we take our altimeter right here it says 2992 because we're at 38,000 feet at 18,000 feet I'm gonna set to the airfield or altimeter they give me it in, in uh, center or approach depending how that works in uh, NorCal <clears throat> and then we'll be told altimeter blah 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 altimeter blah 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 that's a pain but it literally is keeping you safe by knowing your altitude okay that's what transition means and again initial frequency of 117.7 will fly off to 114.6 and then we'll intercept 113.9 for the localizer which one's that oh that's the one we're going for oops so to our localizer at CPEN um, 117 111.7 I think it is we'll look at it in a second uh, unless we're in low visibility, and I mean low, we're going to be under, a, for me, it'll be under a thousand feet, but I mean, you're not going to put this plane into auto land, um, easily. Well, you can, a simple, make sure this frequency is the ILS, this one's the ILS, and then when you get there, you go to two, um, use both of the autopilots we don't have that situation so I shouldn't have to deal with it that's our star in our arrival or I'm sorry our actual run uh, ILS again there's our date uh, ATIS NorCal San, San Fran Tower ground okay so we're gonna Put in 111.7 here when we're ready to head for the intercept. 284 here. Um, now, Oxmoor is right here on the chart. It's seven and a half miles from the runway. We got to be at 1,800 feet and on the glide path. So we're basically set up for landing. Decision height, cat one, meaning we're not coupling to where we can auto land. 213 foot MSL or above sea level. That is this gauge. Wait, you can't see that. That is this gauge right here that, that I'm pointing to. 200 feet AGL is this gauge, which is the radar altimeter. So this is MSL. This is air, it's a barometer, but folks, with that gives you your altitude. This is a beam going down to tell you how much above ground. Say you're going into El Alto, Bolivia. Folks, it's 13,000 feet above sea level, mean sea level okay so minimum number here is 13,000 when you touch down I, it's a little higher I know but anyway you get the point this gauge will read 200 feet above ground or whatever it'll it'll be zero but as you're coming in you get the drift this will be a lot less of a number than this because it's physically above the ground that's why it sometimes yells at you when you're coming in with hills and all of a sudden it's getting close to you, then it drops off. That's why. By the way, folks, earlier we talked about improvements coming to X-Plane 12. See this kind of up and down look to the clouds? That's what we're calling pyramids. It's not as defined yet as what we've seen over the Pacific seen it over the Atlantic but that's what they're working on a point oh six
All right. <clears throat> now we're getting into the nitty gritty. So there's our airfield and touchdown. All right. Missed approach. Feel free to read it. We're not going to go over it because it's a straight out to Vike you and you go into a hold. At uh, 3,000 feet. Okay, again, there's our transition levels and altitudes. Okay, this is an RNAV GPS radar required entry. Okay, here's other procedural items. Again, CAT 1. So if you're coming in CAT 1, folks, and hit 200 feet AGL, that runway is not in front of you. It's a go around out to Vaiku and then regroup to set up for the CAT 2 or 3 if the you and the aircraft are certified. Otherwise, vector back around, try it again, and maybe this time it will work for you. Maybe not. Then you go to your alternate. In this case would be Sacramento. <clears throat> All right, so here we are, folks. Arch, Archie, mandatory 7, sealed, cure, dubba. Once we're on Dubba, we're on the localizer. We just got to get 3,000, hold it, let the glide slope glide in, catch us, and then we come down. Oxmal, I will have the landing gear out. We'll be flaps 30, ready to land. May even be closer to SEPA, 12 miles out, because a lot goes on, folks. So let's get over and check our fuel. I'm pretty sure is going to be good. 12,000. Yep. So put the pumps on. That is perfect. We're going to go these two off. We're now tank to engine. So basically, wait a minute. Do I want to do it that way? Yeah. So these are all feeding their engines and keeping the pipe with fuel. And then when we get close enough, we'll open these up, drain the fuel into them, and go. Okay. See a lot going on, folks. Okay, we're going to get through this chart real quick, and then we're going to get into setting up for the arrive for the uh, aircraft. Here's the uh, vertical. Here's the speed. So from Uxmal to the missed approach point, we're going to be up around 150. So it's about a two minute to. Hang on a second. Correction. It's about a two minute, ten second ride from Exmol to missed approach. So <clears throat> 200 feet or when the clock gets to zero, you go around. Should be doing about an 800 foot a minute drop feet per minute if we don't have the glide slope. Just kind of set it up for that. Got a full ALSIF 2 uh, approach lighting system with the pappies on it. They'll be on the left-hand side. And we need to do a Category 1 approach, an RVR of 18, runway visual range of 18, or a half mile. Otherwise, we have to do a Cat 2 or 3 arrival. And again, our minimums, 200 foot AGL, 213 above sea level. Okay. That's our charts, folks. Now, let's get over here and get the uh, calculations ready. First, go here. Load sheet. Okay. And then this, you just got to use Sky Vector or Sim Toolkit to help you with all the rest of these numbers. So, we're coming in uh, to a... 11,900 foot runway. Unfortunately, 
Yeah, I gotta round up. Elevation, 13 feet. Zero. Runway heading 284, 280. Slope, uh, let's see. Uh, we'll put it zero five up oh, down. Did I read that right? Yep, down. Okay, and again, these jaggies are because I turned the anti alias down. Okay, so there's your runway. Now we got to go to the condition. Sky Vector is a great place for this. 280 at 15. Parametric pressure here. A lot more calm than JFK at 30, 37, I think it was, we took off. And outside air temperature, 17. <clears throat> and I believe, let me uh, look at that ATIS again. Yeah, we're dry run. It would say something like runway 555, and then you know it's wet, or it's contaminated in some way. This time of the year should be wet. <laughs> All right, and you are now set. Here are your speeds. V ref of 134, so I take it back. We're going to be about 140 coming down. So. So let me pull that up real quick, let you all see the difference. Where'd it go? There it is. Okay, so 140, we're looking at 743 feet a minute. That'll keep us on that proper glide, if the glide slope's not working, for 2 minutes and 19 seconds. Um, 200 feet AGL or two minutes, 19 seconds. If I don't see that runway, full. go to go around power, gear up, flaps up, and head out to Vaiku and get in a hold, per the instructions. They don't have a speeds, or do they? Let's see, I don't see a speed, so you got it. Defined by the Sausalito 185 radial 116.2. SFO radial 11, which is radial 115 decimal 8, 281, 12 miles. For those meet, that's where you'd start your turn. I'm going to fly it at 210. All right, folks, there you go. That is our arrival brief. Real quick, let's uh, look at those numbers again. So flaps can start coming in at 234. Here's the schedule 20. Uh, flaps 1, 5, 10, 20, 25, 30. And then we're planning 134. Okay, now when we set the speed bugs, each of those ticks will be these flap speeds, which is all of them, I believe. Yeah, there's not one missing. Go ahead and set them. And now they're set up as you read. Let's make sure. Okay, we're set. So folks, I know we have about an hour and 20 minutes, but folks, it's, you know, you got a brief for both runways now because of that nice little radio banter that happened a few weeks or months ago. And go from there. All right, so I hope you all enjoy. Uh, like I said, we got about an hour and 20 minutes to go and uh, we'll be on the ground. Um, again, I want to apologize for all of the internet issues we've had around 
it's the same time every day and uh, so that's why I know it's not a modem or a router issue it is a internet service provider issue in this case Charter Spectrum finally someone goes duh it's right it is our problem so uh, hopefully we get that worked out tomorrow um, could turn to a short notice cancel if I see frame rates like they are um, I don't know yet because I would love to be on VATSIM because of the flying to Katai having you know I would love to have you all join me um, but uh, I don't want to have internet issues with this plane so we'll we'll play it by ear how tomorrow's flight goes however that is in the in the works folks to happen that kai tai flight uh and i hope to do a couple of them because my game plan is at some point to go from sfo to narita then narita down narita is tokyo japan if you're not familiar and then down to Hong Kong to shoot that approach. We'll see how this all transpires. So that's about a, a 10 and a half, 11 hour flight. I'm going to say closer to 12. So we'll see. All right, folks. So I am going to kind of shut my yak here and uh, let y'all unwind and get ready for you know it's friday eve folks so it's time to realize the end of the week is here <sighs> can all go ah it's friday as a uh, george jones great country and western singer penned a song called finally friday it is folks look it up if i play it i get gigged <laughs> So look it up, enjoy it, folks. It's Friday Eve. See you in about oh, 40 minutes, folks, and we'll be ready to set up for the arrival. We'll be setting up everything else. Let's take a look at our fuel panel real quick. Make sure things are copacetic here. May have to shut those to shut those outer tanks okay if i were to turn these off right now these engines could very easily shut down that's why you got to get these cross feeds on and then you can turn them off for about give it a couple minutes and then come back and check them i want them to be at about 13 12 to 13 I, I don't know where the uh, 18s will be by then so oh no I want them down yeah so so I want them down around 15 a little between 16 and 15 all right folks so we'll be back with you here shortly
All right, folks, back with you. I'll just be on the side here watching chat, and uh, we'll be back with you in about... Let's see, we got an hour and 11 minutes showing up there for the ETE. And we'll give it about 30 minutes. Let you all relax, enjoy the music, and uh, we should be coming into the Bay Area here soon. I'm actually going to set Coaldale. Let's go 16, get 17, 7, albeit that is definitely too far out, but Wilson Creek, now yeah, let's go with Wilson Creek, 16, that's 16, 3, Let's try 112. All right, so Milford is 100 miles ahead of us. From there, it's a 66 mile run past Wilson Creek. Uh, and then 161 miles to uh, uh, Coaldale. So you get an idea. And then once we're in Coaldale, we'll work that top of this. As a matter of fact, I'm going to start calculating that now. We're coming from 38,000. Oh, I did it wrong. Okay, we'll times that by three. So basically what you do, you take your altitude you're at, get rid of the zeros. To the altitude you're going, get rid of the zeros. So you want to take 38 minus 11, that gives us 27, times that by 3, gives me 81 miles. <clears throat> I'm going to add, let's make that 101, and we'll come down at about 2,000 to 2,300 feet a minute, keeping an eyeball distance measuring what we're doing. Okay? So... For now, let's give it about 30 minutes. We should be over Coaldale at that point. And then my game plan, I'd like to try to fly this VOR to VOR. Uh, we'll see, though. <clears throat> but that's my plan. So we'll see you in about 30 minutes. In Suwick. Chillaxing, awesome. Welcome in, Usulik. I hope things are going well for you this Thursday Eve. Pushing almost Friday there for you. And uh, we are unfortunately not on VATSIM, and this is the reason why. Our frame rates are having struggles at staying above 20 which is what X-Pilot requires to be able to stay connected. And told it's a SAL, SASL or something like that issue. I don't know. It kind of sounds creaky to me, so. Now let me go check. So, now I got one guy over at the uh, Fila site saying it could just be the streaming that's doing it. So, I don't know. But again, folks, that is why we're not on VATSIM. Let's, by chance, though, I do have Similware still up. Not Oakland Ground is up in VATSIM. Nothing for San Francisco or Oakland's uh, center. All right, and I did promise this, folks, and I apologize for interrupting your chillaxing. 
as we have in the chat. <laughs> if you aren't aware, um, and this is the third time I will have played this video. A um, few days ago, um, there was a 747-400 incident in Luxembourg on video now. So bear with me as I uh, get up to it. We'll play this real quick and uh, let you all watch and go <gasps> like they did in the crash trucks. Let you all read that for a few more seconds here. Carefully. Oh, that's from a pilot. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> I just realized that's a Cessna. I thought it was one of the crash trucks that recorded it. No idea what it hit there, by the way, folks. Okay, here it is one more time. there go the fire trucks as they should <laughs> I just realized that's a Cessna isn't that amazing what this is out here folks I have no idea that it hit but yeah Anyway, a few days ago, that happened, May 14th. So, yeah, I just realized that was from a plane. I thought it was a crash truck. I was trying to figure out, why aren't you going? <laughs> uh, anyway, folks, Boeing has yet another headache to deal with. But from another article I read on that, folks, what happened um, when the aircraft took off, they could not get an indication um, that the gear was up. Um, I don't know, unsafe, well, it had to have been an unsafe. They decided to return, so that's why they went to 10,000, dumped the fuel off to get below landing weight, came back in and what happened to that main gear? Well, hopefully no, but right now we don't. So, but yeah, it failed. <laughs> Definitely failed. And it was actually interesting because last night at work, I was just watching a, a, a video of a whole bunch of, of uh, mishaps with landing gears uh, and and or challenging landings uh, mostly of course your crosswinds and some of them look like the landing gears were all locked and then all of a sudden they collapse on their nose or collapse on an engine or whatever it was just amazing and then all of a sudden I got this in my feed yes this morning <laughs> I thought that's odd <laughs> but now I know why the the powers to be of YouTube he likes those kinds of videos. Send that one to him. <laughs> but yeah, it was definitely an odd way for a landing gear to fail.
one of the videos I did watch, or one of the landings that was in that one video, uh, not this one, but past, was a Cessna landing. And it looked like a very well done landing. And then all of it, like the tire must have blew on takeoff is all I can figure. Because nothing but smoke comes out of this tire. Or the brake was locked, one of the two. Um, wow. Hmm. Ouch. Uh, mentioned a previous mishap with a bogey. Apparently it struck the roof of a van. Oh, that's not when you want it to happen during a Cat 3 landing. Oh, you can't even see the runway. <laughs> oh my goodness. Well, they happen. That's why they're called accidents, folks. And again, the key phrase, statement in that opening blow, um, uh no injuries incurred. That is always the best outcome. The rest of it, we'll, they'll figure it out. <laughs> uh, who knows? Yeah, I, I'm not going down the road about talking about maintenance. They have a mind common sense is where everyone left it in their lap and they don't know what to do with it. <laughs> oh, but yeah, that, that was, I mean, thankfully there's a lot of other landing gear there, to, but still, that's one heck of a flying projectile coming off an airplane. So, I definitely don't want to be in its way. <laughs> so, where are we in relations here? Let's see, let's see. Oh, I know. Uh, so, that's where they're forecasting us. Okay. Of course, they're going off of the... Uh, Diamond 5 arrival. We're going off Modesto. Alright, so we're coming over Mel Mel Milford. Uh, <clears throat> Wilson Creek is next. And then Coldale. And that's when we begin this fun arrival, folks. And again, I wish we could do it online. Uh, but with frame rates the way they are, you, you can't. I think it's just <clears throat> more frustrating to see VATSIM going up and down and up and down on the screen up here than uh, anything. So, it's kind of funny. The clouds have gone away and the frame rates have gone even lower. <laughs> I mean, coming over Denver, we were in the, we were solidly in the 20s, and it was socked in all around us, and now we're breaking free of clouds, and now the frame rates are barely at or around 20. Who knows? But folks, welcome into Flying with Mike. We thank you for being a part of the stream. And for those that may have been trying to catch us a couple hours ago, and it kept going up and going down and up and down or spinning away, whatever it did for you, my apologies. It is, and I have put a report in to uh, feel us. I'm going to send my log once we get on the ground. I could send it now, but let's get it all the way in. 
<clears throat> very concerning. Um, and it could very well be this new livery I'm running. Who knows? But welcome aboard, and I hope y'all are having a great Friday Eve. And uh, if you're new, hey, I'd love you to click follow and follow along. Um, for our next uh, adventure, you'll get an email letting you know when we're going live. So, but uh, it's been a challenging flight just in between OBS, between the internet, between frame rates. Thankfully, all we're doing is to here and not going to Tokyo. This would have been a nightmare. <clears throat> so, um, so thank you for bearing through all of that. I think we've set a record for how many videos it took to get from JFK to uh, San Francisco. <laughs> the upshot is YouTube video I will try to get out by tomorrow morning so you all could watch this in its entirety or skipping through whatever, however you do it um, and hopefully those OBS disconnects don't translate in the video to YouTube um, the same way but yeah we have had we know we have an internet issue finally somebody at Charter realized oh, they have a problem Houston we need to do something about it Thank you, Spectrum. Maybe maybe she's following the stream and she realized watching it what it was doing. <laughs> I doubt it. I'm not holding my breath on that one, folks. <laughs> anyway, thankfully they're going to be out here. Uh, we'll see how tomorrow goes when I fire up what frame rates look like and all of that. But, uh... <clears throat> just glad to have y'all aboard and uh hopefully knock on the the wood that uh, will make it into san francisco drop free <laughs> i think we're at eight on uh v videos created by this flight i think it might be nine so i'm hoping that's it and that's way well, i think our last one that did this last flight was six so yeah what a pain in the you know what all right so coldale coming online 196 miles out so folks that is the entrance to our star so let you all take a break grab a beverage of choice maybe some popcorn potato chips whatever and uh we'll see what we can do Fifty two minutes out. All right, so we need about a hundred miles, but I'm guesstimating. So about Kyla, okay, around Kyla, that now makes sense. I think that's where I usually try to set my top of descent at. So uh, that'll be distance 76 off of Coldale once we cross it. Let me go ahead and put Modesto in on the other side. What is it? One fourteen six. Oh, 
Okay. Okay, we've got altitude set. I just received a checklist for this plane and I'm kind of going over it to see if it's something I can use here. Seems pretty good. Okay. Yeah, we'll kind of watch it as we come in here. Sixty-three miles. Well, we see a lot of names out in the uh, chat area, lurking or visible. Uh, hey, welcome aboard. Hope you all uh, have a great day. If you're new, hey, smash that follow button. We'd love to have you aboard, especially on our next flight. Uh, all you'll get is an email letting you know there's a, you know, we're going live and, uh, or we are live and uh, where we're flying to and from and what. If you're on YouTube, folks, uh, smash that subscribe button and uh, ring the bell there so you get notified when new videos get posted. Uh, those interested in seeing this, hopefully in its entirety, there's a link to my YouTube channel. So, and uh, I think, I'm pretty sure no one's ever told me they don't go through, but then again, it's a six hour video, folks, so... This all occurred in about the four hour mark in it where all the internet issues and hiccups came in. So I get it. So I'm hoping there's no interruptions in it. Okay, Coldale in 140 miles. So I hope you all are having a great Thursday, as I like to call it sometimes Friday Eve, since tomorrow's Friday. Um, and then, of course, the weekend's right ahead of you. So. For those of you Monday through Fridayers, hope you've had a great work week. Um, <clears throat> And set for the weekend. Oh, excuse me. I got to work Saturday, but, you know, that's what it is being a firefighter. You know, 24 on, 48 off. So, um, Monday may be the next stream. I'm hoping to get one in tomorrow, uh, but 
and it was going to be this plane, but right now I'm kind of wishy-washy if I'm going to take it up. I love this plane, don't get me wrong, folks. This is a spectacular plane, the 747-200 from Felis. Highly recommend it. I just don't know um, if it's a version, beta issue, what, I don't know, but frame rates on this have been atrocious. And uh, hopefully something gives, because I really would like to fly this one. Especially on stream. Yes, like I told him over at Felis, I flew this plane a couple of days ago. Granted, not on stream. Um, about four hours, I think it was, from... Uh, Philippines up to uh, Seoul, Korea. Not an issue one with it. Other than to loosen up behind the wheel forgetting how to do things with it. But that's what you get. When you get rusty with them. <clears throat> so, we'll see. All right, so we still got that 280 at 15 knot winds, few at six uh, scattered at 1500. When was this one? 2156. That's a couple hours old. All right, so uh, let's see if we can uh, pull in the ATIS. And uh, by that I mean we'll go to uh, D ATIS. SFO. Twenty-two fifty-six. Okay, that's a little closer to what we're running. Uh. 270 at 15, gusty, few at 700, few at 1500, and still on the two weights. Cool. What did I do there, folks? I went to this website. <clears throat> selected the facility in the upper left-hand corner, scrolled down to KSFO, and uh, that's what we got.
And today, folks, we're flying the Jet Clipper Young America. Like I said, this may or may not also have some issues. This is brand new. I haven't flown it before, so it could also be impeding frame rates. Maybe something isn't meshing right. Who knows? But who knows what is going on with these frame rates. So, but anyway, the animal taking us over to the Bay Area. Again, earlier we talked uh, in this uh, six-hour flight, or, well, six-hour stream, about what's coming in uh, the next release of X-Plane 12, which will be 12.06, whatever else comes after it. Uh, Cirrus Clouds, that'll be really cool to see. And there's talk of working these pyramids you see out into more of what they're, what it was meant to be. They're more pronounced, I've found. Well, they seem to be more pronounced over the oceans, but I know down in Texas and the southwest area, we've seen them pretty, you know, uh, defined. So, uh, be interesting to see what uh, comes. They have done phenomenal things through the beta, through these releases here of uh, these three-dimensional clouds that they're uh, putting forth. So I really look forward to seeing what what is coming. <clears throat> so. All right, we're back with you folks, and uh, we're uh, 60 miles out of uh, Coaldale, and uh, 36 minutes, it says there in the overlay at the top, to San Francisco.
Hi folks, back with you. Sorry about that. Took a quick break here to eat dinner with my wife. And we're back to land it. Alright, uh, where does that put us on my arrival? Okay. We put it on... Old. We're coming in on the it's the two forty six. So, <laughs> here comes the fun, folks. <clears throat> Inyo is... Uh, 47 to 48 over here. Modesto is coming in. And then... Kayla's top of descent, and we uh, start our descent down to 11,000. Be about 100 miles from seeds. Okay, so there's 42, five miles. Okay. Again, folks, hope you're enjoying. Oh, clouds are starting to thicken up again. All right, uh, frame rates, and that's why we're not on fat sim. And what I'm going to do, folks, I know you've heard this uh, at least three or four times today. I'm going to go ahead and kill the uh, in-flight music here. <clears throat> and we're going to proceed in crossing uh, Enyo right now. Now we got about 29 miles or 76 DME, 76.6 .6 to be exact. What I'm going to do is shift and intercept that Modesto um, VOR and then we'll be in our descent. <clears throat> and I'll try not to talk too much. Other than to say, welcome aboard. If you like what you see, would you please smash a follow? Love to have you on future flights. All right. Okay, we're still on Inyo. We're coming off Inyo. Kayla. Okay.
Okay. Altitude select, 11,000. Again, the one thing I really, really like. Right now, I don't like the frame rates. <laughs> but um, I love that they have the numbers on the wheel here. So you have an idea what you're setting to. And then let's go VOR. It's going to change course here a little bit. But it's not a big change. We'll be tracking this. Uh, better part of 70 miles. So whatever, yeah, whatever we got to Modesto. When we come over Modesto, we're going to line it up so that uh, we can fly over and pick up the 245 radio. I mean, we're talking a one degree change to get the seeds. And then we'll set up for the uh, uh, Woodside OSI or TAC intercept to come down to, to Archie. <clears throat> okay, let's watch our speeds. We're set for 290. That's where we're at. Very close. All right, I am going to go ahead. We pull up X plane 12 EPR. I'm going to go ahead and switch into um, IAS or speed. Oh, we're on cruise. Doggone it. Okay. And uh, head up top here real quick. Okay, we're still in flight. Put the wing lights on. Don't think we're going to need any kind of anti-ice. We'll pay attention as we come down. Watch your speed dial. When it's right here, you can back off the uh, speed brakes. Okay, that right now. Okay. Would have been nice to have some intermediate um, information here we're, but we are tracking 245 or 44 my bad straight to Modesto and really just before on your charting if you're following it you can put that on your map that's when it becomes visible folks and then Modesto the seeds. I may be able to keep that. <clears throat> All right, so there we go, folks. We are actually VOR to VOR. We're off the INS and uh, doing our best to track it in VOR to VOR, just like really, ideally, in the real world back then. Today, they'd be on the FMC still. little steeper here 40 miles out all right so we're gonna have 32 miles to seeds 
So as long as we're around 20,000 by uh, Modesto or slightly lower, we'll make it. And we're going to level at 11 anyway, so. And then I'm going to slow to 250. I don't show that, but, you know, that's what we're going to do. So, again, hope you all have enjoyed the uh, ride. It's been uh, rocky and bumpy internet-wise. Flight-wise, I've actually, I don't know, I've felt pretty comfortable comfortable with the plane. Which is something I don't get to say often. So, I really have felt pretty comfortable this flight. Uh, able to get the uh, um, after takeoff done before 5,000 feet so that we can continue on. And, uh, yeah, I, I mean, I really wish we could have run online. This is the really the best I've uh, felt flying this plane, and I think, since I've had it. All right, so ignitions are on TAT to go around. Okay, what they're talking about is the EPR. Go around. Um, fuel heat stays uh, on. Pressurization set. Actually, it's not set yet. <clears throat> How's the fuel? Oh my god, we did it again, folks. Uh, let's see what we can try to do on this descent. We're going to end up landing this thing out of balance. That's okay. Well... It's fine. We just don't want to smash the runway and lose a, a leg under the uh, fuselage <clears throat> like uh, Cargo Lux did. Okay, pressurization. Okay, let me... Uh... <clears throat> Twenty two fifty five has us at two nine nine six. Okay, we'll do the best we can with these pressures back there. Where are we at in our descent? A ease up. I still got 20 miles and we're just now getting to 21. Yeah. Kicked it maybe a little early. I forgot which what this one says. Oh, well, guess we're not going to find out. I forgot what that one does. I think 18,000 at Modesto is perfect. 2996, folks. <clears throat> And as you can see, folks, from the time we release brakes on the runway to this point is just under five hours. About a six-hour video to this point. Okay. as expected folks things pace wise pick up at seeds because we're going to just have to just focus in that's why the music has been turned off 
<clears throat> There's a piece of music I've always wanted to play. I haven't found it yet. Um, but yeah. But I'm pretty sure we'd get gigged for it for copyright. Okay. So what I'm going to do here. Zoom in. 2996. 2996. Okay, radar altimeter set to 200. It's 213, I believe, altimeter wise. We're a little fast. I'll be set 250 here soon. All right. <clears throat> Let's come over here. Uh, revisit temperature 18 and 90 at 15 okay just wanted to get the updates out we're still running with the same numbers we'll run medium on the brakes so let's go up here set them to medium um Okay, there we go. That's what I thought it said. That's why I was looking for it. <clears throat> whoa, whoa, whoa. We're over Modesto. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Okay, there we go. We're back on track here for 245, down to 11,030 miles. I am going to begin slowing this beast up here in a minute. Again, I'd like to be at around 250 by seats, so that way we're at 250. 40, if not slower, by Archie. Really hate that it does that. Kevin, ready. Okay, we're back on track. 13, coming up on grown, that's fine. We can track at 11. 8,000 CMEA here, so we're good. <clears throat> All right, folks, buckle up. Here we go, landing time. Go over here, look at the checklist. Okay, seatbelts, anti-ice, exterior lights, Got our radios. Flight director set brake pressure. Spoilers will get armed as we get ready. And then the fuel panel. Actually, we can go to the fuel panel and turn these off. Okay. How we doing? Not well. Okay. <laughs> we'll do our best. Okay, <clears throat> this is where it's going to get a little tricky. So let me, you know what, let me do it this way. Need fifth, uh, 13. Going to be tracking uh, 236. Okay, we're 19 miles out. Ha <laughs> ha! 
<laughs> it would be nice to have that, wouldn't it? <clears throat> uh, is it the, you know, I think the DC six from PMDG has one. Uh, someone else had, I think the Connie from one of them had it, <clears throat> but yeah, it's all you. That's why I say this is a great airplane folks. You just gotta, it's tough sometimes and in the high pressure times take off and landing. Like I said, today was the first time I felt comfortable on takeoff. Granted, I got on the autopilot pretty doggone quick, but overall I felt relaxed. Okay, we are going to go ahead and begin to slow down. I'm going to go to 240. And... Switch this to thirteen nine. Two three six. Okay, and now we're going to go down to seven. Lights on. NorCal approach uh, clipper five. <clears throat> Seeds inbound uh, two eight right. Part of the reason I keep this like this, so when I'm ready to do the intercept here uh, with uh, Dumba, I can do it. You know what? We're going to come down a little steeper. Nothing wrong with that. We only have about 12 miles. That'll be 20 miles, so nine to go. So we need to get down. 10,000. Yeah, I'm gonna go ahead, get our speed brakes up. Two thirty six. Four miles to the turn. Thousand level off. Okay, two six zero on the heading. And 
ILS frequency is 1117284 and Dumba is C pin is 3000 All right, folks, here we go. In a little bit of speed break, and then we're going to maybe run the uh, checklists, maybe not. Just going to glance over at them. Okay, we're coming through pretty good here on the altitudes. Localizer alive. Flaps five. Thousand level off. Okay, we are fully uh, set up and Dumba. I'm going to go ahead and set two eight. Slowing us up here so it's C pen. I can lower some more flaps. Flaps 10. Okay. Uh, okay. Here we go. Approach checklist, please. Seat belts and shoulder harness. Check. Seat belts and no smoking signs. On. Handy eyes. Off. Exterior lights. Check. Outer brakes. Low. Flaps 20. Near down. Radio INS switches. Radio. Flight director computer selectors. Check. Brake pressure. Check. Spoilers. Armed. Gears down. Green light. Altimeters. One, zero, one, four, set and cross check. Landing data, EPR and airspeed bugs. Set and cross check. Seat belts and shoulder harness. Check. Fuel panel. Check. Fuel heat. Off. EPR computer. Go around. Cabin altitude. Check. Perfect. <clears throat> circuit breakers check approach checklist completed landing checklist gear down and check 
Down and check. Flaps. Hold on. Flaps 25. Flaps 25. Flaps 25. Ignition. Flight start. Anti-skid. Check. Altimeters. One, zero, one, four. Set and cross check. Landing checklist completed. Flaps 30. All right, we're fully configured. Axmal <clears throat> coming up. And San Francisco Tower Clipper 5 Heavy. Uh, approximately 9 miles on the ILS, fully established, uh, 2 8 right. Roger, cleared the land, 2 8 right, uh, Clipper 5. <clears throat> Kinda have runways in sight, but let's get past these clouds before we take over. Yeah, let's just go ahead and empty those out, even though that's going to make us real heavy on the wing, outer wings, but <clears throat> should be fine. She'll be fine. All right, folks, a quick run through my little landing check I just got handed to me. Uh, altimeters, INS set, da, 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 looking good. Runway in sight. Okay, let's go real quick back to speeds. All right, we'll let her slow up here, and then I'm going to set my throttles. Again, taken over. My plane. I cleared the land two eight right. One thousand. Feel that wind. All right, folks. Welcome in. Five hours after takeoff. Six plus hours since depart. Uh, starting the stream, and we're now high. So much for staying stable. Why aren't we coming down? Really want to go around. Five hundred. Sink rate. Sink rate. Sink rate. Sink rate. Okay, we're going to have a long landing, folks. Sink rate. Approaching minimum. Sink rate. Minimum. Sink rate. Sink rate. Sink rate. Pull up. Pull up. 50, 40, 30, 20, 10. Check reverse. All right. <clears throat> Auto brake off. Sixty knots. Out, off, reverse. All right, went a lot longer than I had intended, but that's because we had a nice long landing. And. 
and we're coming off I don't even know what taxiway I don't think I've ever come off down this far all right let's get the spoilers up flaps up flaps one coming across the Delta okay Ooh. Yeah, we're, uh, wow, I don't think I've ever come off here. <laughs> wow. Hello. It happens. Okay, bear with me here a second, folks. All right, we're going to be taxiing to Concourse C. I think you would be better served inside, so we'll do that. All right, landing lights off. Okay, let's get this back to heading off radar to standby. Okay, we'll run our after landing check. landing checklist brake pressure check boarding is steering arm out of brakes damn off ignition What I just clicked, but I put these down. Off. Engine and wing and the ice. Off. Radar and transponder. Stand by. Flaps. Hold on. But I had flaps up. Oh, I missed a notch. Up. Flaps up. Spoilers. Down. Stabilize the trim. Hmm. Seven units. Outflow valve. Open. Presentation mode selector. Let's see. Manual. Off cargo heat. Wait. Off. APU. Check. I believe this is the old Pan Am terminal. <clears throat> However, it's now renovated for, was Virgin America, but now something different. But we're going to head to the one ahead of us. Okay, everything's good.
Cabin crew, disarm slides. Pit to ground. Put the chocks on. Chocks are on. Okay. We're ready to shut down. In a minute. <clears throat> Let me uh, get over here and get things set up. Uh, close, close. Okay. Lead. Okay. All right, that's all set. Let's go ahead and shut them down. Damn it, I hate this about X-Plane. Nothing wants to go where you tell it to. Okay, folks, we have arrived. Let's uh, let that checklist, the last one, run. All right, secure cockpit checklist. Brakes. Mm. We'll get it, folks. Oops. My bad. All right, let me get over here and skip that one. Beacon lights. Off. INS. Align. Probe and window heat. Off. Back valve. Check. Fuel boost pumps. White. Reserve tank valves. Closed. Hydraulic panel. Ah, uh, this. Check. Oxygen. Check. Flight recorder. Off. Emergency lights. Mm. Off. Radar. Damn. Off. 
radio switches. Let's see. All right, we'll skip those. That's it. So check was completed. All right, there you go, folks. We're in the blocks. Okay. Not pretty. Still low on frame rates. But it is what it is. <clears throat> All right. <clears throat> A lot of things to go over and to work with, but... uh. Let me uh, get back to the panel here. Okay. This was one of those things, folks. When I set the parking brake, it doesn't set. Uh, I've actually got to throw the chocks in in order for this to do its thing. All right, let's see if it's going to take it. All right. Even with all the internet issues, <laughs> at least it filed. <laughs> all right, hang on. I'm clearing out this flight. Okay, there we go. All right, folks. Well, Clipper 5 is in the gate. Um, welcome to... San Francisco the ugly way. Why it wouldn't want to come down, I haven't figured out. But it is what it is. All right, so uh, so everyone knows Pan Am scored us 265 uh, minus 265 on the landing, and they accepted it, so that's good. All right. Uh, clearing some of this up here. All right, so what we'll do from here, uh, let me find, if I can, a better angle. I think I just might sit right here. Okay, let's pull Sim Toolkit up and take a look at this. Being this graphically looks good. Yeah, yeah, we know. Um, finish the flight. Now that'll put the flight into the logbook. Okay, there it is. Sim toolkit recorded. Oh, not on that page. 287 feet a minute at 130. If you remember right, folks, that's very close to what we were supposed to be V ref. I'll take that, but I won't take, well, I will because it happened. Uh, the approach, um, in my immortal words, sucked. Why it did not want to come down, I don't know. Autopilot was off. So why she just wanted to hang at 500 feet and not come down, uh, that's beyond me. But uh, heading, ideal was 283. We were pretty close. 287, good landing. Hate to break it to y'all. 130 knots, four knots shy of what we were supposed to be. 1.2 Gs. Overall, folks, it's good landing. Sucky approach, but a good landing. Long landing, long rollout. <clears throat> okay, real quick, we'll look at it here to show you that it was long. Okay, your threshold. Uh, <laughs> look at that. Eh, this is not very uh, very uh, user-friendly because it says we are 700 feet off the center line. That's because it was set up for 28 left. Go figure. But anyway, you can see where we touch down right here, which is about 3,300 feet down the runway. Too far. Threshold, just so you all know, is the blue dot right there, which is also this line here. Really shouldn't land here, folks. Sometimes they actually, no, they shouldn't be lining up and waiting. Because if you touch down here, you took them out. And you definitely don't want to touch down in here. Uh, but anyway, these are 500 feet down the runway, and this is what you aim for. And we were way up here, just outside the landing area. Okay. 
And then we went all the way down, folks. You get an idea. I've never come off at this taxiway. <laughs> Usually one of these is my longest, or I'm pretty decent at getting off at this one. I went almost all the way down. Hey, it's 11,000 feet, folks. I can use it. They don't like you to do that when they're in heavy traffic, but it happens. All right, so there you have it, folks. The flight, what we're going to try to do, and i not holding a lot of lock and stock on this. We're going to close everything up. Cockpit to ground. Remove the chocks. Pull away. Look at those frame Shots rates. Removed. How horrid is that? I really do not know what's causing that, folks. I'm going to be totally honest here. If we go reverse, now they're picking up a little. Let's see what happens. I don't think it's going to do it. All right, folks. Well, I am going to go on the assumption it's not going to play nice with us, and it did not. <laughs> All right, folks. Hang on. Let me put a screen up here. Well, folks, it was a good ride nonetheless. A good flight overall. Uh, just... Uh, do not know what caused all these frame rate issues that we uh, encountered. Um, hopefully we get a fairly decent answer from the guys over at Fearless here soon, but we'll see. All right, so folks, I hope you all enjoy. I right now am not sure if we'll fly tomorrow. Oof. <laughs> yeah, I, when I saw 11, 10, I think even a nine, I had a real bad feeling it wouldn't go into where we could replay it so folks uh i hope you enjoyed we've been on seven hours almost seven and a half hours so i really hope you enjoyed this uh ride it was a ride indeed so let's uh go ahead and get this uh working its way out and uh maybe we'll be back up tomorrow if the frame rates behave. Otherwise, we'll see you the next time. God bless you all. Have a great day. Thanks for flying with Mike. If you're new, hit that follow button, folks. Love to have you on our next stream. You'll get an email when we go live. Otherwise, folks, have a great night. If you're on YouTube, hit subscribe and ring the bell. That'll give you a notice uh, when we uh, put a new video up. As Inswick said, blue skies, everyone. Have a great night. God bless you all, and we'll see you, fingers crossed, tomorrow.